Right. Yeah, Judy just made made a good comment. If there's folks here that uh, would sign in to uh, let us know who you are and you know where you're from, it's helpful for us. You know, and then if you want to correspondence, you have your email on there. We can send you stuff out. All right. First on the agenda <clears throat> is the town plan public hearing. Todd, do you want to take that? Uh, sure. Yes. The, um So this hopefully is, I'm hopeful this is the last public area of the town plan. We've done this a few times before. We need to make it through a select board and trustee hearing so we can actually vote on the plan without making changes. If we can make changes tonight and the trustees don't adopt them, which may not happen if we make changes, we're back to re-morning more hearings and pushing this back up for more months. So I'm really hopeful that we're at the finish line. We just edge across it tonight. So see where the uh, public hearing discussion takes us. What version are we at now? 33. 33. I think you're here version 34 tonight. Okay. I'm hoping we stick to 33 personally, but it's up your call, it's up to you. Okay. So what changes, what do we need to discuss? Okay. Well, it's a, I don't know the page number. I'm trying to find my town plan. It's a transportation section. Right? It begins on 11. And there's a highlighted section of uh, the plan itself is highlighted in there. It discusses the, the speeds more or raising. It's the same chapter we discussed, same line we discussed two right. or three years ago. Right. It looks like it's right in the middle of that second paragraph. So. <clears throat> Eric's got changes. I would need any changes. Uh, yeah. I have, I have a copy of it. Yeah. And, um, we, Eric and I attended a meeting with uh, some LCPC members, the board, not the board, staff. And there were board members, not staff members, but board members who objected to our use of the term object. And they thought it should be more collaborative. And Eric was really very good and patient in addressing it because the same criteria or the same purpose is going to be met by either types of language. But we want to get this over the finish line. Here's the language I propose. Therefore, this, so it would take place, it would be, um, there for the adjustment. The, the highlighted part there. I yeah. think it's right there, it starts. Okay, I have a different version. All right. So it would be, um, whatever iteration this is, on page 11, second paragraph about halfway down. And the word is therefore already in the document. Therefore, this plan encourages open communication with our neighbor communities through which the Route 15 and Route 100 pass. We are supportive of initiatives within village centers and designated downtown areas which protect pedestrians and bicyclists. We support the reduction of the speed limit in the area of the rail trail crossing in the town of Johnson, which increases pedestrian and bike, bicyclist safety. We will work collaboratively to help our neighbors be aware of the negative impacts to our community that are incurred as a result of any further slowing of traffic outside of the village centers and designated downtowns. So we support the slowing down of traffic. You're looking for my opinion? Oh, say, okay. how does that sound? Uh, the planning council voted not to take any more changes to the town plan. We'd like to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, they're tired of uh, <clears throat> see the uh, perpetual changing in the 33rd and 34th iteration. I really think language is a really nice compromise. It's an attempt. I really think it got the intent of language. It really did. I mean, we started with we're against a roundabout uh, traffic lights when they're not warranted by V-Trans. And then for we made a compromise and say, okay, outside the villages, and then it was designated downtowns. And then we had to put in, we had we were slowing traffic down for the uh, rail trail crossing in Johnson, which you're slowing, you're, 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 you're supporting slowing people's commutes down for the 23 people who might use it on February 3rd. I mean, you're slowing 10,000 cars a day down. I mean, there are other ways, we had language in there about wildlife crossings over there versus the restoring the speed limit. So I think we've bent over backwards to continually compromise and compromise and compromise about language that's already been said to meet the statutory requirements. So 
I mean, we're not even out of the loop if we don't actually get through a hearing without changing language. We need to get through a hearing without changing language. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where I stand. How does the board feel? How do, how do you feel about it, Brian? I agree with that. It's time to move forward. How about you, Jess? Because we can do something about this. Right. Without having it in the plan. There's things we're going to do mm -hmm. through the time that we're here. It's not the plan. Right. So. Jess? Okay. Um. I I support the change. I do. I am. Um, I'm also um, aware that you know this has been many many iterations, um, and I am sensitive to the fact that it's frustrating. But um, I I do think it's important to take on a collaborative and um, tone um, in terms of working with our, our neighboring communities. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know that it's really um, going, or will really slow down um, commute time. Um, I, I think, I don't know how, I mean, I understand like it's a death by a thousand cuts maybe, like if a bunch of, a bunch more, um, you know, a bunch of speed limit reductions, but um, I support the new language. Can whoever's uh, listening mute themselves? Thank you. Just testing me. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Judy? I too want to get this through the process, and I am concerned about it being that some of our community out beyond Morrisville are going to be blocking it. That's my biggest concern. And I don't want that to happen. Um, I'd rather do the, the work here and not have it blocked by other communities for us to, for it to come back and haunt us again. So I support changing it. I, um, it, it doesn't change the uh, intent at all. It, the, it's the language. You're done? Yes. So I guess my question is, maybe to Eric and Judy, because you, you were both at that meeting, correct? Yes. The objection is coming from LCPC? It is coming from their executive committee, not from the staff at LCPC. The executive committee has a couple of members, uh, uh, one from uh, Stowe and uh, perhaps one from Johnson, that uh, have voiced concern in that the plan does not meet the statutory requirement of its collaborative nature uh, and that the language does not feel collaborative. Um, this is the committee that would have representation from every town? No. No, this no. committee does not have representation from every town. In fact, Morristown is not represented by the executive committee. Okay. So I guess my question is, if we don't adopt this, do you have a sense of where LCPC is going to I think be with this? Not that we should feel pressured by them, but I'm, I'm just kind of yeah. wondering. I don't know um, the exact process. I don't know if it's just the executive board that votes on this. No, it's the full it's, board. It's the full board, so it's a it's a Plan and Project bigger review group. recommends, the executive board has really no say in this. The Plan and Project Review Committee recommends the full board, the full board votes on it. And I don't think it has to Even be unanimous. Even if they say no, we can just come back and change it then. We just keep changing ourselves. We never get to the finish line. We've got to get to the finish line at some point. But the finish line involves LCPC approving this as Not well. Not necessarily, no. We Not don't need a regionally approved plan. That's only if you want a designated downtown. But we do want a designated downtown because we're looking for grant money. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's, we, a, that's yeah, a goal. That's a um, goal. Because we haven't been, we lost our downtown, downtown designation. And there's... Yeah, I wasn't there, but I read it. I read about it. I would um, recommend it doesn't be a downtown, but that's right. not that's not my decision. Decision to make. I don't think there's right. really much to gain out of it. I I I don't. Um, I respectfully disagree yeah. with that. I do think that there's a lot to benefit from it. I've talked to Trisha about um, certain grants that we can apply for, that would really um, benefit beautify our downtown, um, especially in terms of um, public. Um, public spaces and green spaces, um, for instance, the better. Um, I believe it's called the Better Pathways Grant um, that we discussed with the SE group. Like a lot of these grants, we can't apply for until we're a downtown, downtown, you know, a designated downtown. Yeah. So, you know. So the objection then is coming from 
at least a couple of towns. Stowe, you mentioned. Cambridge, did you mention? I did not mention Cambridge. Johnson. Johnson. Not that it matters, but what towns they are. But the objection would be coming from those towns. And the, the, the towns are in agreement with us. I, would you say that too, Eric? I felt that, that they are in agreement that, there's a, that there may be an issue with slowing down traffic. You didn't get that? that? Okay. All right. Okay. I haven't talked to any representatives from the executive right. committee. This is simply from right. conversation with the LCPC. Uh, I don't remember hearing. It's just that the objective we have yeah. seems to be the same objective as some of the other communities have. We've just, we've just voiced it differently in the plan. Uh, maybe I'm... I mean, I'm not I, saying it correctly. I don't remember them they seeing any no, they, of the other communities agreeing with us on, right. our, on our stance right. on this topic. Uh, they may or may not. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm I'm mixing up. I'm mixing up another conversation where I know that the Stowe community is very concerned about their traffic and what's happening over there. So we have the same concern. I guess that's what I'm, I'm melding those two conversations. I would also caution the board if you make this change tonight. The village trustees are very unlikely to make this change. We're back to canceling more hearings and doing this all over again. <coughs> You've got to have one plan for both groups. The trustees have made it very clear the last few meetings. I'm the one person who attends pretty much all the meetings when there's planning stuff. They're not making more changes to the plan. They're done. Planning's done. Trustees are done. So that's it. if you make the change tonight, it's okay. It's your project to do. The trustees will likely, I can't speak for the trustees, vote no. They'll have to get together and try to figure this out. If you want to vote yes to this change to the plan. What's, so your that's the, that's the road ahead. What's your guess on the planning council? Would they support this change? I don't want to speak to the planning council. Uh, I can tell oh, that. Steve, good, Steve. good, good well. entry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't support the change simply because um, we've gone through this process with, um, yeah, I know. Okay. Um, with LCPC. Steve, respectfully, I just meant that today. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's and I'll, and also, This is the LCPC letter. And Steve, we all know you, but can you introduce yourself yeah, for sure. the Steve Foster, the, um, I'm the studio member of Morristown's planning council. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, forgive me. That's no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the plan, I can tell you the planning council can handle it, but know that we further change the plan. I saw that in the minutes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and, and part of the reasoning behind that is we, we had sent that transportation chapter to LCPC um, as part of our planning process. They had a comment period, um, we made revisions. Um, I think they had a second comment period, maybe a third. So we've gone through this process with them a couple of times. Um, and I feel again, you know, as we talked about coming coming to the process as we warn minutes to do this, to do the warning over to further delay um, doesn't benefit anybody, but um, it doesn't, I don't think it benefits anybody in the community to continue to push the can down the road on a plan that we've worked on for the last few years that they're particularly LCPC has seen and has had um, ample time to comment and make make um, revisions to. Um, I don't. I, I think this is supplemental language to what we were talking about in the plan. This would be a replace the language to uh, the intent of the paragraph. Replace the bold very much. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the intent of the paragraph. It just uh, softens the language. Sure. And this would have the same effect in having to rewarn. Um, the plan and go through that process again, right? Correct. Because uh, I think we're not going to get changed on Wednesday night. I can't speak for the, oh, first of all, I can't speak for the trustees, but they're very clear at the last meetings no more changes. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, I guess the only thing to say to that is we opened up the town plan at the behest of the select board um, because it was our understanding that the, the directive that you gave us was to create a new town plan so that it aligns with, with the intentions of, of um, the downtown designated uh, requirements so that we could apply for downtown designation again. Um, we think we've done that. And again, you know, it was, it was directed to do it and do it rather quickly. And obviously that has not happened. It hasn't been a quick process. Um, we've gone through this, we've belabored it for many, many months, uh, two years now. Um, and, you know, anytime we make changes to it or new language gets added, um, we go through that whole warning process again. Striking language doesn't seem to have the same effect. <laughs> so, so if we want to strike language because we feel it's necessary, um, then fine. But I, I think from a planning council perspective, to go back, <clears throat> talk about what we talked about, go through the changes again, go through the whole warning process, it just feels over laborious to us 
uh, and, and tiresome. Um, along those lines, Steve, um, I'm wondering if if there is a way to reword the existing language. I know that Eric and um, Judy, you probably have already done a lot of work on this, and I apologize um, if this is um, way out of left field. But is there a chance that the village trustees would um, approve this if we, it sounds like the really um, objectionable part on the part of some of the executive um, members of LCPC is the word opposed. Is there a way that we can soften the language um, to make, to like- It was, it was object, we, we softened it to- To oppose, oh, it says- yeah. We softened it to object. Oh, okay. sure. I don't know if that's a- so <laughs> We already softened it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the trustees will consider any changes. No, I really don't they won't. They will. They're done. They're done. I mean, again, you know, I, stake my, I stand out the position I made. This language would be fine for me. But mm -hmm. we go back to the same predicament where we make the change and then we have to go through the process. Again. Yeah. And it's just, it's... I had, I had a conversation with Steve last week about this, and I'm really glad you came in right yeah. when you did, because uh, I totally agree with what you're saying, and I know that the Planning Council mm -hmm. has spent over two years developing this. Three now. And, yeah, three. You know, it's a 10-year plan. It's going to take 10 years to put in. So what I think is the same as the trustees. I don't, want to, I don't want to see any more changes at this point. You know, we don't, we don't need to. We, there are things in the plan that the town might not do. And there are things that are not in the plan that we will do. So it leaves the door open. And I don't think there's any reason to, to delay it just because of the way things are worded. Because there's always someone that can come in and say, oh, I don't like the way that's worded. And, and I understand where the trustees and the planning council are coming from. That, that's my opinion. But we can vote on it or whatever. I think it's time to press on. Jamie, go ahead. I just had a quick comment. I mean, Steve brought up the, that it was opened up by the select, at, at the request of the select board, to gain uh, downtown designation. Mm -hmm. But it seems as though we're running into the situation where if the language isn't changed to a way that is amenable to LCPC, and then that they approve the plan, then there's no downtown designation that's going to be granted. Right. Well, I don't think that. that that's just they, right, right, right. And I, and I wondered that, but right, I think that LCPC, they don't have to approve it for us to get downtown designation. I don't believe that to be true. No, no. They, they do need to do a the planning process. They need to sign off on the plan. The plan's been written. This is a different plan. We wrote this plan to planning council for downtown designation select board assets to do. Right. I don't think this is the plan we would have written, but this is a plan you have for that process. If right. they do say no, if they vote no, if they vote no, they clearly don't want to work with us, in my opinion. But if they, and proof's in the pudding on that one. If they want to work with us and they want us back, I think they, it's one mm -hmm. town making small things. We're 17 right. municipalities in Long County. The villages. I forget the number. There's 17. Well, more than that. So it's two votes. More than it's two votes. There's going to be 20 something people voting on the plan. So I think it will go through just fine, in my opinion. Maybe it won't be an unanimous vote, but I think it will pass. If it doesn't pass, we've worn the plan. We have a new hearing about to do anyway. We can do the probably we can finish the plan now, get to the trustees, vote on the plan, submit it. And if they reject it, then we regroup and we make some more edits and we more in the same process again and just do it over. And we're just keep we're we keep getting in our own way. We need to actually get to the point where someone can actually vote to approve. And if they want to say no, then we're regrouping at the same hearing we're going to have to have anyway if we change the plan tonight and do that. So yeah. it's really, we need to get it out of our, get it out, off our agenda. We're having the same discussion tonight. We had eight weeks ago when Don said, I'm good at the language, let's move on. Let's move on. So I want to just uh, go back to Jamie and, and Todd clarified, I just want to reiterate that it's the board, uh, the LCPC board who are elected that votes on it, not the LCPC staff. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, sure. just no, so it's clear. I, I understand right. that. I just yeah. think that. And it's the executive board that has problems with it, right? It's cup two or two. A couple of them. Two hours of executive, yes. And they don't even come, they're not Morristown representatives. And are they voting on the town plan? They sit on the board of directors. They need two of the 26 people. Okay. So Todd, if we don't make this change and LCPC should not adopt it, not support it, does that doom our downtown designation? Uh, or does, not or not do we have other avenues? Maybe another change to want to, do, want to revise that plan. We would have other avenues to reach that same goal. Yeah, 
you know, we just had to revise the plan. I mean, we can revise it now amongst ourselves again, which we've done multiple times for the same organization, or we send it to them, which this, stand, this plan meets statutory requirements. There's no reason they should vote against it, in my opinion. We send it to them, if they want to say no, then we can make more edits and do the, have the hearing again and send it to them again. I think what happened, one very obvious point, but we have no ability as a town to control the trends. So if they want to put a traffic circle in, despite what our town plan says, they can do that. Mm -hmm. But they do it knowing that we, as Morrisville people, don't want to increase our travel time to those destinations. Ultimately, they can do whatever they want. So that is a good point. They certainly yeah. can, and they do. And they do, and they will, regardless of what we ask them not to do. So do we want to take a vote on how you guys want to do it? Do you want to... You need, you need a, a motion, don't you? Well, I need to get to the town plan. I'll change I need someone to vote, close the time. You're not voting tonight. Close the hearing. If we don't, <coughs> all we do is get through town without changes, and you can vote on the plan at the next meeting. Yeah. So you get another two weeks to vote on the, you get another, when's your next meeting? May? The 20th. 16th. 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 No. 16th. So 16th. if you get through this hearing without changes, which you've never been able to do, and the trustees get through a hearing, which I'm confident they will do, we can vote <coughs> on the plan on May 16th with the select board, May 18th with the trustees, have a final town plan. You ship it across the street for the LCPC review, and if they say no, we can come back and make more edits. But we need to get to the finish line at some point. We're I feel like the are going in service. Right. We have no motion on the floor right now. Right. I think it's, we don't. I think doesn't need, doesn't need to be but it doesn't need to be. I just want to kind of us to be in agreement. If we're going to change the plan again, we need a motion to do that. It'd be I mean, nice for us to have a consensus. Actually, I think I'll just, from talking to Penny today, I'm going to just cancel the Wednesday night hearing. If you guys make changes, and figure out whatever language you want to get in. I'm not going to warrant hearings until right. July or August until we figure out language that both boards can work on. I mean, I still have plenty of time. My zone is not due until next June. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning to just leave it alone. Judy? Yes. Jess? Yeah, I'm leaning that way as well. Brian? Yes. And I say leave it alone. Okay. Are there other issues on the table about the town plan this evening? That's no, a good okay. question. This is the last one. So, shh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have another hearing before approval. You have a vote. Not a hearing. We have a vote. Right? Hearing. This is the last hearing. This okay. this week of the hearings. You have a hearing tonight. Yes. I'll be at the trustee hearing on Wednesday. We can both make it through the hearings without yes. changes. You vote on the plan at your next regular meeting, which will be May, 20, May 16th, and the trustees may be And then the plan's done. So we're very close. Almost there. He's sweating. He's really, you know, he's so close to the so finish close. line. <laughs> See it in your forehead. Yeah. You, you look a little thinner, too. You've been losing weight. Want it off my desk. <clears throat> okay, so you don't need a, a, an official vote. But no, I just closed the meeting. Okay. Are there any other, um, are there any, is there any other comments from the crowd? No. I made a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I, um, I I still know that there's um, some question and concern around the um, the zoning change around the um, the <clears throat> reduction of the um, rural agricultural zones um, and um, that hasn't been changed or addressed. But I just want to go on the record saying that um, a lot of people have reached out to me and are very concerned about the um, character of our town. Um, with um, the language in here in place that. Um, reduces the, um, the minimum lot size to one acre um, for the rural agricultural zone, which is a huge area of our, um, our, our town. And there's no um, language that says um, where exactly um, that reduction should take place. So I just want to go on the record to say that. OK. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to say nay. <clears throat> OK, four to one. We're closed. Thanks for coming in, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right, we'll call the select board meeting to order now. Um, I'm just noticing there's a few people standing. Do we want to open? Do we want to open and add the more back. chairs? Open up the back. That's a good idea, Jeff. Thank you. Give people some more room. I think it's this. I think it's this, maybe. Oh, it's the, uh, the be right in here. Yeah, but we change the, um, uh,
Who's the servant board? I noticed the nephews so I figured we'd give them the service. Yeah, good idea. Community concerns. Coming up right here. I, I My palms are already set up. Yeah, I know. I know. What are you say? Me too. I was going to say, is, on these busy agendas, we should talk about not doing the community concerns mm -hmm. on those nights. Yeah. They can yes, really push really me along. I, I told maybe, Eric, and Eric totally agreed. But. What if, I mean, can you say at the beginning that, that we're just going to limit the time? Yeah, yeah. I okay. want to talk to all you folks about it first, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Today might not be the day. Yeah, right. <clears throat> All right, so now we are in regular select board meeting. Eric. <coughs> Do you have any changes or additions to the agenda? No changes, thank you. Uh, next, approve the minutes. The minutes of April 18th, 2022. So moved. I, I have a motion by Judy and a Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on these? Um, I have a couple notes. Um, uh, maybe I can remember them off the top of my head. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Um, sorry. Um, I just wanted to. Um, document who voted for the joint rules for appointment. Um, it just says motion carried. So on page four of the- um, Oh, it didn't say. It didn't say who voted for what. And I opposed the, um, the joint rules of that. appointment. Um, page, yeah. page four. Yeah, um, I'm, right there. Oh. Yeah. oh, so it did say motion carried. So motion carried, motion seconded, but um, so I it was um, four, four, and one, I was against. Right, four, yeah. was it four and one? Mm -hmm. Four and one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that I opposed. Right, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't have to say oh. who opposed. But it generally does, doesn't it? No. Oh. Yeah. Not the not the ones I've ever seen. Oh, okay. So it's a secret. It's a yeah. secret. You got to tune in to YouTube to know who did. <laughs> okay. I think no, it, it generally serious. doesn't. Okay. And it did mention that you were you uh, have, were concerned about being people being excluded. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, in Jess's defense, it has sometimes said that. Right. I yeah. think it depends upon who's 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 author. writing right. the minutes. Right. Yeah. Well, the minutes of you know we've had different people doing it for the past year or two. Yeah. Last month. <laughs> I also and, think uh, it would be useful too because then if someone's going to write me an email and say what the heck, you know, maybe they. Would have a different tone. That could be something new to yeah. add to it to, to make okay. sure it's in there. Yeah. Okay. Who votes yay? Who votes nay? Because then they can call you instead of me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I was one, I had one question, and when I first read it, it sounded as if I made a motion that we're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars for a rapid response crosswalk beacon. But I rewrote rewrote the, read it yeah. on page three. So does it make sense that we're going to? It's the sidewalk gaps, and then including the rapid response and light beacon. So the beacon isn't costing two hundred thousand dollars. The whole project is costing. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. When you read yes. It? Yeah, it does. And I was thinking the same thing when I read that. It does sound that way. But yeah, okay. our conversation sounds like about the entire money, project. Huh? Sounds like you're trying to spend money. I know. Okay. Do you have those changes? We do. Thank you. Anything else, Brian? Did you have something? Well, I just want to make sure at the beginning of the meeting when when the screen wasn't working. Yeah. It says, there were three of us here and, and two on. Three of us said nay. I don't know if we ever heard what you said, so we want, I want to make sure that you knew. Do you know which one that, that was? I, oh, it, it says five. The first two, right? It was a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it says 5-0, but we don't really know if it was 5-0. The, the motion carried, but what Brian says is it might not have been 5-0. Oh, approve the, the you guys kept cutting control? out. No, approving the minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Do you remember that? We had a little discussion about that. 
And you, you kept cutting out. Yeah, I, well, what time. happened is I cut out. I, I, I couldn't be there. For right. The start, so. You couldn't. You didn't understand it, so you couldn't really. I couldn't. I couldn't. So maybe it should hair. be 3-0. <laughs> right. Or 2 or four, it, four, 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 okay with five. Yeah. I'm fine. Oh, I'm, fine with I, I'm fine with five. I'm fine with five. You're fine? Yeah. yeah. That's what okay. I want to make sure. Right. Your... Right. Because you really didn't know what you were voting on if you couldn't hear I, it. No, I, I, did, I heard that, but I didn't um, I didn't make it to the part where we actually voted. I, I didn't okay. okay. Yeah. And it happened on two of them. I think. It did. It was two of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. oh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are passed unanimously. Next is community concerns. Do you have community concerns tonight? Yes, sir. You want to uh, stand and state, yeah. state your name, please? Yes, hi. Welcome. My name is, my name is Neil Carlson. I'm with a local amateur astronomy group called the Royal County Stargazers. We have three other members here. <clears throat> Quigley, Connie Perlin, Leslie Griffenberg, we're here to discuss an event that's going to take place two years from now, which seems like an eternity, but it's something that we are, we think we should start planning for now, because it could have a big impact on the town and on the world. There's not a big asteroid coming our way, is there? <laughs> well, if there is, you don't have to plan for it. Right. Um, no. um, it's a full solar eclipse. Yeah. And so Steve is going to introduce what it is, and then I'll talk about the nuts and bolts of the planning. But do you want to start with the mic, or can we just say? If you can speak loud, you can. All right. Can you hear me? Well, I think also... I think the mic is better for yeah. the yeah. recording. Yeah. 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 That's true. Well, the mic's better than my Josh Foley. Just a picture. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, as Neil stated, I'm Steve Poiley, member of the Stargazers. It's going to be a total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024. And we're here this evening to give you some information which may be of interest to you since it's possible Morrisville will be impacted. Mm -hmm. Giving you this, you, this information uh, two years before the event may seem silly. But it's better to be ready rather than have to scramble to get ready. First, a quick astronomy fact. The moon's 400 times smaller than the sun. It's also 400 times closer. It's a kind of a unique arrangement, so the moon will perfectly cover the sun. Probably unique in the universe. Uh, when it does cover the sun, you get a total eclipse. And, when, and that is probably the most spectacular natural event you will see. I know the story of a young man who saw his very first one many years ago, and after it was over, he said, when's the next one? And for 20 years, he's been catching every single solar eclipse that he can get to. And he's not alone. There are eclipse chasers who go thousands of miles, spend thousands of dollars for the ability to catch a three or four or five minute eclipse. Um, this is necessary because the eclipses, although they occur every year, they occur in different locations. The last one was in Antarctica. There'll be one going across Africa. The one will be in South America. So they're all over the world. They're very hard to get to some way. And Vermont is 2024. Now, when the eclipse begins, the sky begins to darken. Uh, the birds will start to nest. The crickets will start to chirp. The shadow of the moon becomes visible, racing towards you. And at totality, you'll see beads of light around the uh, sun, as indicated in the pictures there, but some are called Bailey's beads and a diamond ring. And in totality of the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona is visible. And the cover page kind of shows the glow around it. And there's another picture further in the, the discussion there. You get a, at Vermont about a three minute eclipse, but you'll always remember that three minutes if you see it. Uh, will Morrisville see any eclipse chasers? Well, we're on the center line of the eclipse. You'll not very close to it. And you'll see a map in there. It starts at Mexico. It comes over to Nova Scotia. But Vermont will be a target for some people. It will not be seen in southern Vermont, so people will travel north to see it. Uh, you'll note in there there's an advertisement for a Canadian tour group who's already advertising 
2024 eclipse in Vermont. Uh, so it's hard to say if you'll see any eclipse chasers, but I'll tell you my last experience of, of one. 2017, I went to Lincoln, Nebraska to view the eclipse. I actually planned to spend the night in Lincoln and travel south about 60 miles to a little out of the way place called Beatrice. Tiny little town out in the middle, literally of nowhere. And that was my plan until I found out they had 60,000 people waiting at Beatrice. <laughs> so I stayed in Lincoln and avoided the tidal wave of cars leaving. And I can just visualize a lot of cars on Route 100. Um, Neil is now going to give you some things you may want to consider, and then we'll be down our merry way. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and if you can do me a favor, just pass this around. Sure. All right, so as Steve said, I'm going to discuss the nuts and bolts of what's going to be involved here. Um, can you guys hear me in the back? Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I sort of broke this list up by what we as an organization do can do what we're going to need the town to do, and what, what's going to involve both. So one thing is just going to be PR. Um, what's involved to let people know that this is coming, although as you saw from Steve's ad, there are, are already travel programs advertising come to Vermont to see the eclipse. But you know, we just want to add more PR. Second thing is about safe observing because you know how difficult it is to look at the sun, look directly at the sun. The problem is a lot of people will try looking directly at the sun during an eclipse, and you can cause eye damage. So we're going to be pub uh, publicly describing several times over the next two years what you need to know about to avoid eye damage. Um, it's a spectacular sight, but you don't want to damage your eyes to see it. Um, after that, we get to the town issues. Traffic management. Um, I don't know if I can imagine 60,000 cars going through four corners. Um, I don't know if anybody can, but we may have thousands of cars. If the weather is bad in Quebec, in southern Quebec, there may be people coming down to see this. So Vermont, Lamoille County, is going to be kind of a magnet for this. So traffic management is an issue. Road work management is an issue. Parking is going to be an issue public safety, police presence, sanitation, wherever people wind up looking at this, there's going to be a heavy need for porta potties or any other sanitation issues, uh, medical services, theoretically commerce and revenue in the area, any restaurant, any store, any hotel could see business. Um, as Steve mentioned that when he was in Nebraska, he went to breakfast and saw something like 20 different I saw the eclipse t-shirts. So we'll be talking to local businesses in town to see if anybody wants to take a flyer and put together t-shirts. Um, viewing sites. We need sites with clear <coughs> sky views, with parking. Eric suggested that we talk to the airport, so we'll do that. Um, and what will our involvement be? We're trying to not get too deeply involved because we're all astronomy nerds and we want to see the eclipse ourselves. <laughs> so as much as we want to help people and help the town however we can, we also want to be looking through our own telescopes. But we'll help wherever we can. And the kicker in all this is weather. Because we can <clears throat> plan for a beautiful clear sky and a stunning eclipse, or we might get eight inches of snow. Mm -hmm. And speaking as somebody who lives in Elmore, I wouldn't be surprised if we did get eight inches of snow. But if everything works out, it will be a spectacular sight. We'll get people coming from all over the place to see this, and we want to give you two years' worth of warning to do planning for it. So um, does anybody have any questions? I just looked on the calendar, and it's a Monday, too. Okay. All right, good. Then um, hopefully we'll have more information for you as things firm up. But we just wanted to get this on the on everybody's radar now. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
I'd just like to note that the staff for the town last town all requests for leave for April. So moved. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Thank you. It's, not, it's only for like three or four minutes, maybe five minutes. So. Yeah. All right, do we have other community concerns tonight? I have a community concern. My name is Laura Nephew, and our family is trying to bring some more housing in. Um, we're running into the second big problem in Morrisville, which is parking. So we've been brainstorming some parking ideas, and one of them is messing with Hutchins Street. And I see you. Um, one of the first things I want to bring up is the idea that not all of the spaces in the municipal parking lot have to be nine feet. Your camera, there you go. Have to be nine feet in width because there are indeed in Vermont very, very many trucks and other things that are large vehicles, but they're not 100% that way. And so I don't think 100% of the parking spaces need to be nine foot wide. In fact, allowing for a few of the smaller ones close to tight corning areas where trucks can't really fit and they end up taking up two or three spaces. Okay, just two. Depends on how badly you park. Um, not you, but <laughs> you. Um, but really, most parking lots in other cities have a standard of 8.6. If every one of the parking spaces that are in that parking lot are this size, you get 117 instead of 112. So it's something to consider that not all of them have to be nine feet wide. Beyond that, we started thinking about what can you do with Hutchins Street? Because our building is right on Hutchins Street. It's us and the guy. Pleasant Street on the side, Portland Street on the side, and up here is the new Lamoille Housing Project and Barber Realty. Now, so this particular setup says we take and make Hutchins Street a dead end right at Pleasant Street or close to it, probably this side of the um, private home that is up there. And has anybody seen Pleasant Street lately? It used to be this kind of hill like this, and now it's this, there's a big dip off of Pleasant Street because of all the construction. So a lot of the excavation work has already been done for us for this particular idea. And then you can put straight in parking in this area along our building, which is 109 feet long, you could put in 12 spaces at nine foot wide. I mean, we're not even talking compacts. And 12 spaces is close to what we need to find to make it our building work better. Now you're gonna say, well, nobody wants to put a dead end there. So we can make it a two-way street where we block, where the, where the dip comes down and then drops right off, right where the construction fence is or a little higher. You can put a big old planter in that. We know how to put planters in places. So we can have an upper and lower Hutchins Street, which can be completely parking. We have the problem that, well, it's not really a problem, but Barber Boulevard, you can't put parking in, I mean, Barber Realty, you can't put parking in front of it because their whole lot is an entrance exit. But that does allow for parking along our building and along a planter box. And also, six or seven more parking spaces in front of the Loyal Housing Project, which is also needs more parking. Um, and you can, even in this project, you could be putting in your storm water drainage while you're leveling stuff out and moving things around while you're still doing that. Um, and my favorite one is just to make Hutchins Street one way and have one lane down, uh, down because going through the municipal parking lot 
<coughs> left onto Pleasant, and then you just go down Hutchinson and get back onto Route 100. We're pretty used to going all the way down Pleasant now, so it's something that's not too hard to think of. But that would allow us to put parking either straight in, which might be a too long for the single lane here, or 60 degree angle or even 30 degree angle parking. The advantage to these angles, when you use 30 degree angles, you can fit the turn only needs to be 13.8 feet all the way out. If you use 60 degree, your, your lines end at 15.8 feet out from the um, stopping point, whereas if you're having straight in parking, you need 18 feet, sometimes 20. So we would prefer, um, if 12 foot wide is not wide enough for a specific lane, then angle parking might be a way to fit parking in even when you don't have a full 18 feet worth of space next to the building. This particular plan, this could be put together tomorrow with a very low budget because all it would take is some paint in my room. I'm sure, sure side. I'm sure that's not the case. Laura, sure side. Which side? What side? <coughs> oh, this side. Okay. So another idea. So here's your current road. Instead of dividing it up and you know left or right, put a big piece down the middle. And then you can put parking on both sides easily enough. Less parking probably than you could if you had it all to one side or another. And then because I couldn't stand it anymore, I had to do all three in one place. So the top line shows um, Hutchins Street one way with parallel parking against our building. The second one down is Hutchins Street with one way down with 30 degree angle parking all along the building. And this bottom one is very um, uh, hopeful um, <laughs> and it shows Hutchins Street uh, one way up or down with straight in parking against our building. Um, I see the bottom. See, the problem with any of these is we have to get it past the fire department. Yes. Right, I need 19 feet. 19 feet for your lane? Set up the ladder. I love what you're doing. I just was here in the short distances. Yeah, no, no. Either no. one of them, to the new one and yours, to gain access from that side if we have to. Our legs have to extend out 19 feet. Okay. So, okay, so these, these are not the know. work of an engineer. These are the work of a bunch of crayons <laughs> and somebody who looks stuff up on the internet. So, because right now, I love what you've done. The, most, it's good. the narrowest part of Hutchins across from our building is 29 feet. So, even if you had just 10 foot, that would be a pretty narrow scrape for a parking space, but perhaps we could figure out a way to make it work. There are other streets in this town that are open to more parking striping or whatever. The problem is, is we have to open our minds to let that come in and happen. There is a limited amount of surface area. We are willing, as, as our family, there's a good, um, there's a 10 feet here, 12 feet here and 6 feet here. That whole hillside on Hutchins does not have any parking, but that grassy hillside comes down. There's no obstruction to doing something about putting parallel parking there, especially up by the hillside, because you still have 19 feet across the road to get um, to get the big trucks in. And you really got to have those big trucks. All of this would have to go past anything where the trucks have to drive around. So snow removal and all these other things would be something to think about. But I want to find out how we can start 
initiating some ideas about parking instead of just complaining about the parking we don't have. Um, I also want to ask about the municipal parking lot. Apparently, according to the Development Review Board and um, the Zoning Administrator, this is the board that decides how many spots are available in the municipal parking lot for overnight parking for winter use. And right now, you have it set at 35. But the way the new parking lot is set up, you could actually do it in half and half sort of things. So that half of the parking lot, which is about 50 places, you can park there tonight. And then they snow, take the snow away from the other places. And then <clears throat> Tuesday night, everybody has to move over to the other park so they can clear the parking lot over there. It, you don't have to have the same 35 spots every night. You could expand that to a large section that all has that. And really, are you going to put storage of snow in diamond-coated parking spaces in that parking lot? I don't think that's a good idea. But I don't have any say that. So who do I talk to about setting up some kind of parking committee and looking at all the streets and looking at all the opportunities that we're missing? Because although our building needs these parking spaces, if it's one thing I hear complaining about, in the News and Citizen and on the Port. Where can we park? The BFW has only got so many. The churches have only so many. The, we need more parking, then we have to be more creative about what we're doing with our parking spots. The other, oh, another one was other cities have alternate side street parking for snow and weather. With the little yellow lights going around, you can only park on the right side of the street. No green ones going around, you can only park on the left side of the street. There is only so much surface area. There are more and more cars. Uh, I really hope that that solar eclipse does not come in a snowstorm because that would be problematic. Because <laughs> they're going to be here whether or not there is any snow or prediction for that matter. I was in Portland during that eclipse and the entire city of Portland we drove 30 miles south to see the eclipse and then drove back again. It was like a two day experience. So. So I, I just wanted to thank you for coming in tonight. I think that's a great presentation. I, I it's funny because just the other day, I, I realizing, you know, I always used to use Pleasant Street and cut down on the Hutchins to go through town quicker if it's congested in the center. But it's been it's been closed for so long now, it's like it doesn't matter. You know, you either go down over the hill to 10 Railroad and around, or you go through the regular way, and it's no big deal. And I, I and thought myself, yeah, the idea of making it one way, I thought of that like a while ago and doing parallel, parallel parking like that, but I wondered how many spots would it get you? Do you have 10? 10 well, spots or 11 spots? The parallel parking one, let me see. That, that would take up the least footprint you know, as far as like what as Denny's talking about. Forth, yeah. But if there's a fire, they can pull cars out of there yeah, anyway if, if they're fire, parked. You just, you know, you've yeah. got a big tow line. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> but I love the creativity <laughs> that you're doing, and I'd love to have a. I'm sure Jeff would jump right on board to be part of the parking committee. You know, we do have some other. So here's one that's got three different styles yeah. three different styles the parallel, the angled, and the tightly angled, and then the yeah. um, straight in. I, I absolutely love your ideas, and I think we could get together with the highway guys and the fire department and the police department and find something that will work because I think that's excellent. I really do, whether it's one way or whatever. I'm totally impressed. I, um, we do have some plans to do other parking in other areas around, like, I don't know if you're aware, but we, there is plans to have parking in front of Noyce House Museum. There's, we have permission from Peter Bourne to use uh, the portion beyond Thompson's Flower Shop, or what was, you know, uh, past uh, your place there. You know, it's like a, it needs to fill, but I think, Dan, we came up with like six spots we can have there, too. So just, this we have a lot of parking. This my family, yeah. because we, our project is going to be busted apart because we cannot find 
19 spots. Right. Well, we, well, we are going to reconfigure them. 19 spots if I can talk to somebody about getting it done. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we can. I think there is a plan to reconfigure the parking lot. You know that. Um, it hasn't been finalized or anything. And the current board we have right now hasn't decided anything. Um, but, but I love the idea. The board that would decide what to do with this. That's block. correct. And That's correct. Street. So you guys are the people I'm talking to. Yeah, and we're absolutely, I'm absolutely willing to, to try to work something out. I love the ideas. I think we need a parking study. Yeah. yeah. I, I do too. And I was, she said. I was at your, the DRB meeting the other night, and I listened to the presentation that you guys gave, and uh, it's on my list of things to talk about for select board concerns. And yeah. I, I think we're in dire need of a parking study so that we can finally find out what's really going on. And, get this done and that way we're not looking at one person's opinion versus another person's opinion and just get some number. I know Todd's done some work and God bless him for doing it, but I, you know, I think we need something that really looks at the whole downtown area. I, I agree with what Bob said. There's a lot of great creativity on those board, on those sheets of uh, paper. Everybody likes brightly colored. Love it, love it. We had a couple comment, Tom and then Julie. Yeah, is everybody just Sit in an above-ground garage? Yes. Jess talking about I'm the parking garage. The, yeah. <laughs> but, with a, um, but with, like, recreational purpose on the first floor and then parking above. And then trees so on the top. Do. That's my vision. Yeah. So a lot of the parking problems. Yeah. Well, the but that's expensive. Those parking spots are costing you $30,000 a piece. Yeah. 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 Paying for the Paint doesn't cost that. Right, right, right. Right. Well, that's long term. I guess long what Tom's saying is long, long term. term. But yeah. In yeah. Our family wants. I really appreciate. I really appreciate this presentation, and it's really opened my mind about yeah. the possibilities. And I'm absolutely work, willing to work on any on a committee to help make it happen. Julie, you had a comment. Yes, I am. Um, many of the cities around the country don't have any parking requirements with their houses in. One of the uh, suggestions I would have is that we reduce the one parking spot per permit per apartment, especially for housing that is on the bus line, that is in the walkable downtown, that is going to be accessible to people who have physical disabilities and don't drive, and there's no need to have that many parking spots. And I, you know, we we have in the past made. Uh, you know, for the Lamont Housing Partnership, it wasn't one one car per apartment. It is 0.75 parking spots per. But we are being required to come up with one for one. And I know this board two weeks ago said we weren't interested. But I think we can be a lot more um, open, and I think we can be a lot more willing to consider that not everybody drives anymore. Right. I think there's a big thing with the size of the parking spot, too. I mean, I own a big truck, but I also own a very small car. And not every spot has to be, you know, 9 by 20. You know, I well, think there's... You don't think much about five parking spots, but that's about what the development of your board oh, would allow nine. Right. They need 19. Well, right. if it was one to one, five more spots would be that much more... Yeah. And the Royal Housing Project paid, offered to pay part of the refurbishment of the municipal parking lot that allowed, that made it more favorable to go forward with their plan. Well, we have some real estate on Hutchins Street. We would like maybe we could put in a sidewalk somewhere. We have to anyway, we have to put a sidewalk along the side of the building. Maybe we could extend it up the hill. Maybe we could do some helpful other municipal things to make it a more favorable picture for the town. Sounds good. Where David, we, David, you had a comment. Um, she had already mentioned alternate sides of the parking group, uh, the municipal parking lot. The other night when we were talking about it at the DRB meeting, that was there were already 21 extra spaces by doing that just by alternate snow removal days. Um, and then as far as the sidewalk up Hutchins Street, this kind of dovetails into what Laura was just talking about. I was thinking there's really, unless you're, if you're in a wheelchair, going up Hutchins Street, that's a wheelchair that's not motorized. And I tried this. I went to, I got in a wheelchair and I went around town in one because I wanted to see what other people 
that are, are dealing with these disabilities have to do in this town to get around. And going up Hutchins Street is a problem in a wheelchair. It's, it's hard work. I, I've said to you, I, I have talked to you at the board before about okay. this. I have thought about access to that upper parking lot because just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean you can't drive. There's, there's, this has been, there's apparatus to deal with this. To get up to, from the, 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 build, the new building on Hutchins Street, in order to get from there up to the municipal parking lot, you have to go all the way up the hill, all the way down the sidewalk into the parking municipal parking lot. The, the bank that's there could be turned into a ramp that hits the stairs. There's a set of stairs on the new plan that's just about at the top of Hutchins Street. If that plateaued and then came back, cut back the other way, people could access that municipal parking lot on a handicap ramp that, that could be that one that one to 12 pitch that, that is necessary for ADA use. So that's something that you can, I think should be added into any plan that's made for these parking areas. People have to, people that can't, that have mobility issues should not be um, ignored. Not, not considered, yeah. You know? Incorporated into the yeah, it needs to be it needs to be considered for these people because this is a community. It's everybody. It's not just people that are able bodied. Right. Well, I love the idea of a parking study and a parking committee. You know, I think uh, all of us know that that parking in Morristown is really hard downtown, and we all need to find these magic spaces. And I think if we have creativity like this. We can find it, you know. We're we're certainly open to listening to these things because I love I love the sentiment. I love the way you you did your presentation and I, you stole one of my ideas. That was one of my ideas of one way because I'm like I don't miss it now, you know. Turn that into a one way and get way more parking. Well, you know? we could just block all the streets in town. Well, Kevin wouldn't like that. How long everybody puts it? <laughs> yeah, Jason wouldn't like that. Kevin wouldn't like that. No, we can't block right. all the streets. But right. The narrowest part of Hutchins Street is about 29 feet. And I went out there today with my lane tape measure. 30, 29 feet. So if 19 feet, if that one very narrow section didn't have any parking in it, you'd still be able to put your truck there. Right. Well, it's like the municipal lot <laughs> across the street here. That's one way now. And it didn't used to be, as you know. And um, it, it was really not a big deal making that a one way, and that helped a lot with parking. You well, know? and it also um, helps redirect a lot of the, you know, the, the five o'clock mm. shadow right. where there's just just big long lines. Yeah. If if you turn it so that people have to go out of that flow, like if you redirect people who want to go down, then. Yeah. I'm not a traffic engineer, but um, <laughs> that's what we need a traffic study. A traffic Definitely. study, a traffic engineer, somebody yep. who looks at these things and says, "Well, duh." We're game to doing that. I'd, I'd say I'm speaking for the board, but I think we're all in agreement that we could definitely. You know, and I know a lot's been done. Todd has done a lot of research on, on all of this, and so has quite a few people in, in our town. And um, that's why having a, a parking committee is a great idea. You know, and I know one I know is going to jump right on that. Well, so. we make that happen. I think we do a study first before you get yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. We need to do the parking study. Uh, but I'm all for well, it. I nominate, we do a parking study. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. I'm well, I don't think we have to make a motion that, but we can um, We can certainly go forward with it. I love the idea. Thank you for coming in tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other community concerns tonight? I have one, unless it's an agenda item. Steve Foster. Yeah, sorry, folks. One more time, Nate. Uh, Tom, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda. But the, the joint uh, committee policy between um, the village and the town. Uh, I know that you know you've got done some revisions to it, and as part of that, there's new language in there. And I would just ask this board to strongly reconsider um, the notion that in order to serve on one of those boards. Um, you have to be a resident of the village or the town. I, mean, I personally view uh, Morristown as Limoil Central. I joke about it all the time. If you look at our mutual aid calls, uh, 
um, we have taught out often to other communities in and around us. Um, or you can go down to the shopping centers on Saturdays and talk to people and you know, realize that a lot of people come into this community. Um, and by limiting our, our input from the people who utilize this community, I think we harm our boards. Um, from a planning council standpoint, we went from a seven member board to a five member board because nobody volunteered. Um, and now, you know, should these joint rules be ratified, um, you have two members that are no longer eligible. They live in Elmore. Um, you know, and again, I don't think that makes them any less invested in the town or in their, their desire to see good things happen. Um, I personally own a house in Stowe, and if I elect to live in Stowe, um, I, I'm also ineligible. And I think, again, that doesn't make me any less invested in what we do as a community. So I would just ask that you, you please think about that a little bit more um, before you ultimately decide to make those decisions because there are plenty of people that don't live in town that, that are heavily invested in the future of the community, volunteer their time, and put a lot of effort into making this the best place they can be. And again, don't necessarily have that tax ID that says, hey, you know, I'm a Morris County Thank you. Thank well, you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate I, everybody listening Steve, to yes. I agree with you, Steve, and I was, um, I was. She's the one who brought it up. Well, I'm the one who initially brought up the. But then voted uh, against it. No. Yeah. So may, may I clarify? Yes, Thank you can. I'm picking on you, Jeff. I I'm the one who brought the um, rules for the um, for the subcommittees to light, and um, but it was only only to make sure that um, our process for appointing new members and um, making that public um, was transparent, and then. Um, the, the new language about who is eligible having to be having to be a resident of Morristown or Morrisville that came from um, the village trustees and that was not my intent in bringing the rules to light and so I did vote against as right. as Bob said I voted against yeah. um, that decision I don't know if um, it is possible to revisit that I think it's been oh, as yes, far as can. I understand it is. We but I, I know Steve that yeah. there there were several people here during sometimes our discussion on the town plan mm -hmm. who are we're questioning why are people from other communities sitting on our committees. Sure. So they, they brought that to us or our attention. I don't know how many people out there are concerned about it. I know there was one or two, at least two. So yeah, I don't know if that, but sometimes that does represent others. Yeah, to that injury, we have an opening on the planning council right now. So if any one of those individuals would like to step forward. Come and say that a little bit. Louder there, yes. <clears throat> um, Thank you. At, at the present moment, we have an opportunity for any one of those individuals on the planning council to step forward, you know, go through the process and and sit on a serve on a board. Um, so you know, I, I, I hear that and I understood um, probably where the impetus for this was coming from. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, we went from a seven person to a five person board because nobody volunteered. We'll see over time how long it will take to fill that seat. Hopefully, it will be quickly. I mean, it would be great if it did, uh, but historically speaking, that's been a very hard um, seat to fill. You know, we meet twice a week. Um, you know, it's not, it's purely, or twice a month rather, we're purely volunteer. Um, you know, so uh, again, we have an open seat. Somebody wants to take that role, they absolutely can. Um, you know, I think they have to write a letter of intent to you and then submit it to the board. Um, and be, to the, um, Eric. Eric, excuse me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the new man. Man. <laughs> I think what we need to do is um, revisit that policy and um, vote to make that change. I, I had a conversation with Steve again on the phone about it, and I totally agree yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, like even even when you're talking about police, um, fire or rescue too, you know, it's like a, I lived in Elmore for 30 years that I served on Morristown Rescue, you know. Yeah. And I don't know, what, you know, how many um, Elmore residents serve on Morristown Fire. I'm sure there, there's definitely cross with um, I'm thinking Jason Tolman. Uh, yeah, but then how far do you go? Is it select board? Yeah, is it well, trustees? Is it planning yeah. commission? Is it you know DRB? Where do you make that? Sure. I think we have to be more. Um, we have think. to quantify. I'd, what groups we allow. I'd also like to note that when we had that conversation, it was never a conversation about asking people that were on those committees to get stepped down to step down if right. they weren't from Morrisville. Exactly. The conversation was all about filling vacancies. Yes, it was. And and how do we do that? And that's and as Jess already said, the trustees brought up that language. And it'd be nice to look at the Morrisville policy. residents. Yeah. 
Morristown was. I talked to one of the trustees. Thank you for your consideration tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I was talking to one of the trustees tonight, and he was kind of afraid you're going to lose some good people. Yeah. And he'd like to see something like even grandfather. Right. ones that are okay. Okay. for one thing but like he said too you don't mean grandfather that they got to be there a grandfather that they can be their name could be thrown in the hat and if they're they think you want them there well certainly if they're already on if they're already serving they shouldn't be dismissed because right. they've served for 15 years and they have to live out of town. i can also see a situation where if nobody in morristown steps up to fill a vacancy that's what we've had then we fill it with people, individuals from outside the town. Yeah. So there could be some priority. Well, it's, up, it's up to you folks, mm -hmm. right? And trustees. Mm -hmm. And so if there was someone from outside Morristown, right. that wanted to get, you didn't think they were good, right. then you don't appoint them. Exactly. But if you felt that there was exactly. somebody from Morristown who really wasn't going to do a good job, yeah. but there was somebody from outside of town that was going to do a better job, that's right. up to you folks. And right. then when it comes around to reappointment time, you really didn't think they were doing a good job, you just don't reappoint them. Right. I mean, it really lies with you folks. It's true. Well, I know that like the village trustees, they want you to live in a village if you're going to be, but I know they've bent that a couple of times. Well, and their township, their village charter, right. you don't have to live in the village to be right. a village trustee. Right. I know I that. There's two members that are trustees right now that don't live in the village. Right. But for a long time, that was what they said that's got to be. And I, when I first got on the board with you, we, there was a discussion about that. that somebody, you, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I, I see no reason to, to not change the policy. So certainly the people that are currently serving should be able to continue to serve. Yes. And we can look at people as, as they come, you know, because I know for many years, we didn't have enough people to serve. We were, and Todd knows, we were looking for DRB members, planning council members, recreation members, anybody, we couldn't find anybody, you know? For a long time, we couldn't find people to be on the select board. It's like. You run, no, you run, you know, it just wasn't happening. Well, and I think no. the way the new language reads, um, if someone is currently a member of a, a, a subordinate board and they live out of town, they can fulfill their current term, but they can't, right. um, they can't be They're reappointed. done after. Yeah. And I think we, that's wrong, yeah. too. I know, and that's, and no. I, I, I just want to be, yeah, we need but to revisit it. Maybe if we could um, get that on another agenda to bring back, because we're not going to change it tonight. Yeah. But let's make a plan to make that happen. Any words of wisdom, Todd? I know you. need to talk to the trustees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the trustees made this language, and they were very, at the right. time, and maybe Brian's, their attorney over New Leaf, they were very forceful, unanimous vote. You don't live in the town, you don't live in the village, you don't represent our community. So I think you, you, both boards need to, I mean, it's not just your fault, it's not the trustees' fault. Yeah. We're, you meet on Monday night. This is the only one in the room. Trustees are on Wednesday. They're the only ones in the room. Right. You can't operate in a bathroom. You, you, mm. You're right. you're governing jointly for these two boards. You have to yeah. talk to them. Yeah. And I'm myself and Sarah Haskins are the two people that are employed by both. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I mean, we're the ones that go to both meetings. So right. You're like, still like town planning. Going. This has bounced back and forth a few times now yeah. too. Yeah. The changes. I mean, this is on the trustees agenda for final approval of the select board's last changes on Wednesday night. So I'm going to the trustees on Wednesday to yeah. get your changes approved that you're about to undo. <laughs> Which right. is fine, but yeah, if you want to put it on a future agenda and look at modify the language, I'm happy to help. Yeah. Bring it up the Maybe we should talk to them. But I think but. we should talk to them. At least a representative from the trustees. Yeah. Sit in. I agree. I do think the trustees, I don't want to speak for the trustees, but to Brian's point, if you grandfather the existing people and let them continue to serve, like uh, Paul Trudell was going to be here tonight. Paul's been on the DRB since exactly. 1988. No, 1998. I mean, that's a long time. Oh, he's going to be ineligible to serve because he lives over the line in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. They're okay, Grandfather and Paul, or Steve, or Josh, um, but... Or, they, Al or Alan? Alan's are fine. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think they're okay going the whole reversal and allowing anyone to be... Right. They still want village town residents. They, I think they're grandfather existing people. Mm -hmm. but I don't think they'd go all the way to reverse it back to anyone can apply. Right. Maybe you want to make it taxpayers. There are a lot of ways to skip the cat here. Right. Right, because those folks that own businesses here that don't yeah, live correct. here. Correct. Yeah. And, and pay more taxes here. than most you people. You've seen them again. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a discussion. Okay. Yeah. We're on the next agenda. I'll be here. Yeah. Okay. Do any okay. Change you want. Happy to help. Any more on that? Yeah. yeah. Any more community <laughs> concerns? All right. We'll move on. Liquor control. I know we have some. Do I hear a motion to go into liquor control? So, second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Don. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in the Board of Liquor Control. Yep, we have. Yeah. We have this, this is the updated one. The Green Mountain Distillery, the one that right. right. they gave you. Way to change oh, it. Oh, okay. Oh, I have two. No, no this isn't it. Oh, no, this one is. Okay. Just have two. I don't know. Maybe they all ended up shifting down. Yeah. So we have one renewal and one new applicant. I know Sarah's not going to be here tonight. She just got back in Vermont, and she uh, asked if she could be excused, and we said absolutely. So. How is it that they have some outside consumption, but not, I don't know, none of the other classes, the distillers? I don't, I can't I don't think it lists all. Uh. The distillery is down there. Is it just that the outside con for. consumption is up for yeah, renewal? Maybe? I know I know where it is, but usually it's but the usually outside it says what they, there's, there's another. Pitch, yeah. There's another yeah, either first, that? second, or third. Yeah. Right? Isn't that how that works? Oh, maybe they're getting that upgraded then because they should have already had their, because they've been there for a long time. Yeah, but they would have had, it's still it's listed. Yeah. Well, it's listed under renewals. But do you so, have to have a first, second, or a third class license as well in order to do that? I think so. I mean, in order to have the outside consumption, you have to. I would think. Yes. As is true of the new applicant at the bottom. But could the renewals just be on a different timeline? No, like would the first, second, and third or third be have, I haven't I haven't seen you've one never come seen that through yet. to us that yeah. hasn't had one of those boxes okay. checked besides outside consumption. Yeah. Uh, Jason, do you know anything about this? Uh, I'm not hundred percent certain, but I'm thinking maybe it's like, well, we just didn't check first class. Okay. Yeah. I'm just verifying it with Sarah right now. I think they're just looking for outside in addition to their other ones. Isn't third class just selling them? I don't remember. Sarah told us one time. I don't remember what they all are. Yeah, we'll see. She might be sleeping. She's <laughs> literally just got back from Europe. Yeah. Uh, Mitzi's with us. I'm not sure if she can help us. Mitzi, can you hear me? I don't think she does, but. She listens generally. Right, but I don't know if she I would know right the information on that. Usually just Sarah that has the information for control. Right. I mean, we could do for outside consumption, then I guess I could come back for the others. Right. If that's yeah. needed. Well, we'll give a minute. Let's do the, the new applicant. The soulmate brewing company. That's John, the soulmate. Oh, okay. Okay. Seven 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 number okay. okay. I'm here on the phone. Okay, you want to talk about this? Whatever you'd like to, uh, whatever you'd like to know. I'm kind of losing my voice. I got a cold over the weekend, so uh, yeah. that's why I didn't show up. <laughs> it says you're looking for uh, first class and outside consumption. That's correct. Uh, it's, it's um, yeah, that's just our uh, retail uh, for sales and for our patio area. And then uh, we will be putting a patio on the backside, but we're not sure exactly when that'll be open. Um, uh, as soon as possible but um so we just figured we'd we went over with uh dlc when they came out for the site visit and they just told us to put it on for everything so that they didn't have to revisit it again oh so the outside consumption would only be for the patio area but that isn't that won't be open imminently is that so, what you're saying so the, the the patio area that's on portland street would be open when we open but we are uh, that the, re the renovation that you see facing the municipal parking lot we'll also have a patio out there when we're done so it's just a matter of when we're going to open that up so we just figured um we are putting a patio out there just include it all in this so when we're ready to go we're just ready to open it up okay um i make the motion we approve the soulmate brewing company's application for first class and outside consumption Okay, I have a motion by Judy. I second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion? And we've had establishments there before that have yes, we sold have. liquor. Yeah. We have. 
And that's Jason, it. same spot. Any concerns or questions? No, I talked to John earlier. On you have, you did. Okay. So this so. is a different building. This is same, John Moger's building across. The same building. It's just right across the road here, right? Yeah. Right so beside. I mean, but the other bar that was up there didn't come down on this. Oh, corner pocket. Yeah, that yeah. Just that's a, oh. that's the same building, but it's on the back side, okay. right? Yeah, but it's different business. Front and back, yeah. Right. Yeah. The corner pocket no longer exists. I have totally given a facelift to the uh, building, which I hope everyone uh, appreciates the aesthetics that it looks like now. Yes. It looks much better. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> ha happy to be of service in the community and make things look pretty. <laughs> that's great. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. So I didn't hear back from Sarah, but I do you want to just approve Green Mountain or make a yeah. motion on Green Mountain Distilleries the way it's written? Yeah, because I, well, thank I would you assume. Folks, you me. What's that? I just want to thank everybody and ask yeah. if you need anything else from me. Thank you for tuning thank in. Thank you. Yep. All right. Appreciate it, guys. You're Have welcome. a good night. Mitzi's Bye. texting me says she's trying to find an answer for you right now. Oh, okay. okay. Great. Yeah. I'm on the table and go back to something else. Like right. Well, we got to come out of liquor control and go back in. Okay. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> we are now out of liquor control. And <laughs> that's. <laughs> So they only need the outside. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. They already have their. I didn't their want to assume. For the internal, this is because they're adding outside. So we motion to go back in. I make a so motion. We go back in. <laughs> by Don. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're back in liquor control. Make Do I hear a motion? motion? We accept Green Mountain Distillers outside consumption with the license. Second. I have a motion and a second. Yes, Sarah just came to me too. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Make a motion with Todd and control. Second. Go ahead. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now out of liquor control for the second time. Aye. Boy, why was that so hard? <clears throat> New business. Discuss the noise ordinance. This is it, Don. Okay. This first by uh, Tom Booth uh, weeks ago, and uh, also by Paul from um, Congress and Taps about uh, the board revisiting or visiting, I should say, not revisiting our noise ordinance uh, with the desire to stay open, uh, not necessarily later, but the music to be played to a later hour. Uh, right now, currently, 10 o'clock has been a designated time. For amplified music to be turned off and technically throughout the day amplified music uh, is not allowed but uh, I'm gonna let them speak on behalf of themselves at this point it's, uh, I'm not sure what exactly uh, their, their uh, desire is. So what we have in front of us Eric this is our what right. we have right now. And including copies of our, our noise ordinance and I'll say states that can I just ask two quick questions before we hear um, the um, the input from everyone here? Um, one is, um, do we do we know? Um, are we are we looking to um, maybe revise this? Um, if we revise it, do we also have to get the village trustee village trustees to approve? Um, is it possible to revise on a trial basis? Um, I'm just trying to, before I hear testimony, I was just curious about the nuts so and bolts of it. If you make any change on ordinance, the ordinance has to be posted to public for 90 days. Yeah. In which any time a petition can be gathered to oppose the change in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. At the end of the 90 days, if no opposition is aware of it is, uh, appears, then the ordinance would be adopted. Mm -hmm. There's a, a publication requirement there, of advertising on that. Okay. 
The other thing that the ordinance doesn't have is um, that I could find is a decibel, a decibel right. level, mm -hmm. and a distance decibel level. Mm -hmm. That oftentimes I've seen that where they say it can't be more audible than 50 decibels at 50 feet or something like that. And uh, this doesn't have that at all. And so this is up to anybody's interpretation of what's loud and what's not. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. So certainly the officers uh, that enforce these ordinances in the state law use their discretion uh, in order that they're going to bring a charge. It's a criminal charge. Right. They have to be able to show that there was probable cause and convincingly um, demonstrate that. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of, not to get off track, but Loudon at, at Loudon at the racetrack there. At night, you can leave your, ge your generator on all night if it's less than 60 decibels right up to it. And they walk around with the decimeter and they'll show you it's 64 or 70 or whatever it is. And you say, oh, and you shut it off, you know, but a lot of a lot of the newer ones like mine is like 54. So I can leave it on all night long. So that, you have to have yeah. something to measure that, you know, mm -hmm. and that's have, have something to measure. I would caution you about going down that road well, with a decimeter. I, I just feel that's the fairest way to actually. It may be fair, Bob, but I want to tell you that you, know, you have to equip the officers with decimeters, they're gonna have them driving around, catch your, perhaps the door opens, as right. people, the patrons are leaving an establishment. You have right. to count for a decimal, decimeter. Right. I mean, this, it really is an is a, 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 a unreasonable noise and a sustained noise. Mm -hmm. um, there's a disruption of the peace and the peace, but uh, I would just, I would cross the board not go down the road with the decimeters. Go ahead. So, Eric, I have a question. So this is, Judy's already asked this, but just to be clear, this is the ordinance we live by presently. Correct. In this ordinance, I, I read this a couple of times, and um, it talks in terms of times, and it sounds like we're going to get some testimony about times. It talks explicitly about construction between 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. It talks explicitly about athletics and schools, private schools, public schools. And it talks explicitly about firearms, yeah. but it really doesn't use the times in any other context. Have we just, I guess that's my question. So if, you, if you're not in those three categories, where does time affect you? Uh, to me, it's been a reasonable standard. Time okay. clock has been a reasonable hour at which people typically uh, go to bed. Kind of walkable below. So it's a kind of walk hour. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I assumed as much. I just wanted to hear that. And is it, um, is it um, like precedented that an ordinance would be different on different days of the week? Like, could an ordinance, um, could the time go later on a Friday and Saturday night? I'm not sure instance? you want your ordinance to do that broad base because of the location of the noise and where it's coming from. And if you put it across town, uh, broad-based ordinance like that, oh, right. then someone out on uh, the back road of the Fraser Road, right. having an establishment, wouldn't uh, necessarily disturb people like somebody who has one on Main Street. Right, okay. Or Portland Street, in this case. Two establishments that talked about. Well, let's hear what, what you have to say <coughs> about what, what you're asking for. Well, I mean, Main Street is an important term. Right you introduce there. yourself. I don't follow saying taps and taps. So what we're doing is just having live music. And I've had three tickets, 10.04, 10.07, and 10.12. And an officer came this past Friday, came in, uh, and just basically alerted us that we had a complaint. And they decided it was not unreasonable at that time. And the music was actually stopped at that point. Um, so all, we, we do our best as far as uh, shielding the rest of our neighbors uh, with insulation and uh, trying to keep the doors closed, that kind of a thing. Uh, but, you know, we have a, a trumpet, got me a $200 ticket. I had a, a three-piece jazz band in. Uh, again, that was the 10-12 ticket uh, that got us uh, a $400 ticket. And then the next one was five, and then the next one, uh, apparently, I lose my liquor license. Mm. 
after four. So uh, again, we're just creating a place for folks to come and have a good time, enjoy themselves. We're also creating a place for musicians who earn a living by playing music. Now, 10 o'clock, it seems like we'd have to start music 6.30, 7 o'clock. A lot of people are eating dinner at that time, so we're trying to create a space where people can have dinner and then fall back and enjoy some music. Uh, you know, most of the time when I go out to hear music, it's a nine o'clock start, maybe eight at the earliest. So if we start at like nine o'clock, I'm being told by this ordinance that I have an hour for an act to come in and play some music. And that seems unreasonable to the artist, and it seems unreasonable for the business owner who, uh, from that 10 o'clock, 9 to 10, 11 o'clock period, uh, has a lot of opportunity to, to make some money. I'm, I'm not in the business to just have a place where folks can come and play music. I pay them. People can listen to music, and I don't make any money. So, uh, you know, I have bartenders who are uh, well-trained uh, not to over-serve, so that's not an issue. Uh, I really think that uh, I understand what we just said about a Friday and Saturday night thing that could be broad based and we don't want anybody out sawing and hammering at 11 o'clock just because it's Friday night and the no noise aren't just pushed uh, for those uh, weekend dates. Um, but it's Main Street and I heard about this downtown resignation uh, designation that is being talked about. Uh, I feel it's already a downtown and I'm on Main Street. Uh, so, I, I really, I'm at, I'm at a crossroads here. It's like, you know, do I turn this place into a gallery and, and move this to another town that's a little more willing to, to uh, work with us after the 10 o'clock uh, period? It's just, I'm, I'm at a loss right now. So I'm, I'm looking for some kind of help just to give me a little more time on the weekends for people to kind of let their hair down and dance and sing and enjoy libations. And that's, that's all I got. Do you have a sense of where your complaints are coming from? Uh, just neighbors, uh, upstairs apartments across the way. Yeah, I had uh, a lot of complaints from next door. We uh, put in uh, some foam board and merino wool to buffer that. It's uh, helped out tremendously, uh, but now it's uh, summertime, so I pulled that. And we've had music now for the last two weekends, and I haven't had any concerns from this neighbor. I think we are uh, have an understanding that you know, we're turning the music down. That is one thing we're looking to do. Maybe go on acoustic at later, uh, later times at night, which is helpful. But even still at that, at the third ticket we had, it was an acoustic set, you know, so violin. No, those are things that still make noise. They're, they're instruments. So, you know, you, you even going that route of, of uh, going to acoustic and, and turning subs down and not and, you know, foregoing the use of amplifiers, things like that, we're still running into this problem. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's mostly just a few people that, you know, uh, I don't know how far that noise travels, but I, I've walked around town several times when we've had live music and it doesn't seem unreasonable. I stand across the street the police department at 11 o'clock. I hear my music slightly coming out, but I hear the dam down the road more so. You know, and the dam's not getting ticketed for the water flowing over. Nobody's calling and complaining about that. So, you know, if you were to get the decimeter out there, read, read, read. Yeah, I'm, just, uh, I'm probably on par with that dam at that point. Now the door opens, things like that, and there's things I can do with that also. Maybe at a certain time, we don't use that front door. I can't lock it, fire and liquor and all that kind of stuff, but maybe we try and get folks to go out the side door, but then we have an alley there up, up against Bourne's building. So it's like you open that door, same kind of thing's gonna happen. The noise is just gonna come out and it's gonna flow where it wants to go. Thank you. Any comments on the board? I mean, are you looking for like like a half hour later? 
Like, I would say if you had live music from 8.30 to 10.30 or something like okay. that, or... Well, you know, with that, no that amplification just after. Me to one act. You know, some days on a Saturday, we'd like to have three, four bands right. in there. Because you haven't really asked us for any specific time. Uh, I'm looking at at least Friday. My thought was Friday and Saturday night to midnight. I didn't think that would be unreasonable. I'm not trying to have music loud or, or music on, on, on Monday nights. But we also do have karaoke, which brings a lot of folks in on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. And they just come in and have a great time. Enjoy themselves. Express themselves. Wednesday night, we have an open mic night, which brings in musicians from surrounding towns. We're getting folks from Burlington. We're getting folks from Greensboro, Waitsfield, Mount Pillier, coming in and playing music on a Wednesday night. So in uh, Thursday nights, we did trivia for a few weeks, and I ended that. And we allowed that day for young musicians, uh, musicians to get their first time on, on a stage and, and, and keep honing their craft. We had a 12-year-old last Thursday that really brought like 40, 50 people in there. I'd say about closer to 40, but 12 years old. She held an hour and 10 minutes. And again, that was earlier in the night, 8, 9 o'clock. But again, Friday, Saturday night's going to be some, for, for math, music that musical acts that have you know, uh, they're well seasoned and, or bands that, that are going to come at the top. We, we want to attract as many people as we can. So, you know, that, that just takes up Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. We have music of some sort. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, there's, I don't see that we need to really go past 10, maybe 11 on a Tuesday for karaoke. Uh, Wednesday night, that's a whole nother ball game. We, you know, by the time uh, 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 we get to the last half hour of our, of our open mic now, we have four or five musicians up on stage that really haven't played together or have played together, and now we have a band. So, and it's really hard to, you're really getting in a wheelhouse in a groove and you just got to shut it down. You know, the earlier parts of that day is for musicians that are solo acts or Somebody's going to come up and want to work on something and let, let, let the public see what they're doing. And, but then, like I said, later at night, you got a lot of these, I say cats, but musicians that get together and the magic happens, kind of like the end, end of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We get like the all star jam going. And, you know, 10 o'clock is, is hard to turn it off when you actually really got started at 9 30. 9.15 in, in, in a lot of respects. So. Tom, what do you have for come? I know you're kind of chewing your lip there. What's your experience where you are? I have lots of comments. Tom, and we, we all know you, but can you introduce yourself yeah, for the, the TV yourself. audience, please? Uh, yes, hi, I'm Tom Mook, uh, owner of Mook's Place. Uh, we've been making music for 11 years in this town. Um, I think it's imperative that we support music in this town. It's imperative. Right now, we're growing, we're growing rapidly. We're trying to figure out what to do with the parking and with all this housing. Um, with that, um, uh, you know, Alan's on here too from Lost Nation Brewery. We've got Paul over here and other business owners in town um, uh, that want to have entertainment for the people of Marsville. And through the last 11 years, I feel like I've brought an awful lot of people into this town for business. And we've done a lot for the park, for the Oxbow Park down there. And we've done a lot for the charitable organi organizations around here. But not only that, more than ever in the last two years, I've seen the sanity of people. And they need to go out they need some time for themselves to go to Taco Wilson's house, to go to Mook's place, Lost Nation, Tech Railroad Street, all of these great businesses in town. You know, they want to go out. They want to be entertained. In a way, we're all entertainers uh, with the musicians. And, uh, you know, Paul was talking about the three-piece jazz band, I, I guess, I got a noise complaint about. 
I know these guys. They played my place 10 years ago. They're from Brooklyn, and they should be playing Carnegie Hall. That's the type of entertainment that you know we want to bring to this town as this town grows. Um, I have not had a noise complaint in 11 years. I've had one, but it proved to be illegitimate. Um, I'm seeing the buildings go up. I'm seeing the town change. And I'm starting to think that shortly I'm going to get a noise complaint. Um, in the last 11 years, we have, I have done everything. I have closed doors in between songs. I have um, told people to quiet down their chatter on the porch. Uh, I remember walking in here to get my liquor license 11 years ago, and somebody on the select board said, how late is your deck going to be open? And I said, 2 a.m. And then the question was, well, how are you going to control that? We're going to be there controlling that. And, you know, that's what we do. And that's why my business is, is still here. And uh, people need what we're doing. So um, when I heard the suggestion of Friday nights just taking the noise ordinance, I'd say Friday nights and Saturday nights from 10 o'clock till midnight, it is just a little bit of a buffer that creates Paul to be able to keep his business open a little bit later as far as playing music. And maybe I won't get a complaint at that time, but I've been making noise in my bar until 2 o'clock in the morning for 11 years. So, and it's not always on Friday and Saturday. Sometimes it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we've had all day affairs on Sundays, raising money for charity until 11 o'clock at night. So um, I, I think we're here um, because you know we want this to prevail. We want it to be here. Um, we want to provide the entertainment for Morrisville. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. I'm surprised your building must have better acoustics. I've been in there many times, you know, when having dinner, and I'm like, man, it's wicked loud in here. You guys sat there up on stage jamming. I can't believe you never had a complaint. You know, well, it's, it's like, maybe the neighbors. I don't know. I don't know it might have something to do with, with the neighborhood and the way things are, but the, the building is yeah. going in directly across the street mm. from the restaurant. Right. So, um, <laughs> It, you know, we might get complaints. And Paul had an excellent point, and, and you just had an excellent point. I don't particularly want to do any music during dinner. Mm -hmm. But we're doing a great food business right now. And, and a lot of to-go food, you know, and that's been kind yeah. of a new thing. Um, I like starting music at 9 p.m., mm -hmm. you know, and, and bringing it later into the night. Um, spent the last six months, uh, you know, we're starting to train people to stay out late again because the bars were shut down at 10 o'clock for so long. But um, people really need what we're doing. Um, uh, we'd like the town um, to have our, our backs, uh, the benefit of the doubt. I, I just feel that if we do everything that we can to avoid these noise complaints and to make you all proud of us, um, that we can continue to do this. All right. Tom, I just want to say I agree. I mean, you, your, your business and uh, Tacos and Taps, I haven't been in there yet, but um, Lost Nation, and these are all really important, really important to our town. And I think yeah, we've, uh, we've all seen the transition that's happened in this town in the last four or five years. I certainly have as somebody who's lived here for a lot longer than that and, and welcome it. So, um, and so having said that, now you, you Paul or you alluded to other towns. What are, I'm just interested, what kinds of noise or I know last year in Stowe there was a lot of conversation about music there, a lot of conversation about noise. I'm just wondering about surrounding towns. What do we know about noise ordinances in other towns that are nearby, let's say in Lamoille County? I mean, personally, I think it's a shame what was happening to Stowe Cider um, because uh, our state 
you know, when they didn't allow people to be inside or, or limited such with, you know, the plexiglass, the social distancing, this and that, the other, you know, Stowe Cider, that's when they went outside with the music and it became such a problem. But um, I can't tell you the exact figures of what happened there, um, but I can tell you that there's not a lot of music in Stowe, which also gives us the opportunity of growth in this town. You know, this is, there's a lot of things you can do in, in Morristown that you don't, that you don't do in Stowe. Um, there are other places in the country that play music all night long. You know, it's a, it's a matter of what you want for your town and how you want to do it. Um, I don't think the weekends is unreasonable. Friday and Saturday night, I would like to think most of the town might be willing to stay up until midnight instead of going to bed at 10 o'clock. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Are you suggesting that if the hours are extended, then the audibility stays the same? I'm suggesting that we'll do everything in our power for that to happen. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if there's a way that you can put it for restaurants and nightclubs versus um, uh, construction and firearms. I, I don't know how these things can be changed. Yeah. I just brought that up before because it was in there. It's the only thing okay. that was identified. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to draw a parallel at all. Well, it, but, it's not our goal to make everybody want to be louder. Yeah. We just like to be able to do uh, what I've been doing for the last 11 years. And when you say extend the time, are you specifically talking about amplified music? I am. It sounds as if it sounds as if you're saying you would work within the constraints that are that are here right now. You would like extended time. I, not asking for louder, just extending we're the time. We're not asking for louder. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Alan, you had, you've been up there with your hand up. It's funny the way it looks like with your hand up, but you've been waiting a long time. Go ahead. Well, that's okay. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry I'm not there in person. Um, I just want to echo uh, Paul and Tom uh, and, and say that, you know, we do have a little bit of precedence here that uh, the select board was uh, kind enough last year, or was two years now already, my goodness, to, uh, to, help define uh, the, the sound and noise ordinance uh, when we were trying to have a few shows and where we were running into issues where, you know, we don't want to burden our local law enforcement with uh, these type of enforcement things uh, and, and really put it more onto a policy uh, uh, scenario situation. And um, I think that, you know, what, what Tom and Paul are saying is, is absolutely valid. And, you know, we have to look at all the development that's happening in our town the amount of people that are moving here, we're not building single family homes, we're building apartments. And those apartments are, are attracting a younger generation and that younger generation has a real potential to impact our local businesses. And I, I, I know I speak for myself, um, you know, the, the condos that are going in down off the rail trail, those are new clients for us. And I, I, I also understand that those condos were marketed as walkability from a restaurant and a brewery. So we have an opportunity in this town of what's coming to, you know, really make this tent to open things up and, and rather we want to, we want to make, you know, make noise later at night or not. We have folks that are coming to this town that have the opportunity to one that want to live here. We want to create a good town for them to live. To, and we also want them to give them the opportunity to spend their hard earned money in our local businesses. So, um, again, I'm sorry I'm not there, but I just wanted to give my two cents for uh, we're not looking to do music right now, but I do support Tom and Paul in their quest for um, for clarity and uh, the ability to have uh, wonderful professional local musicians and national and regional musicians uh, in their establishments. So thanks so much for the opportunity. Thanks, Alan. Ma'am, you had a comment. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm Nicole. Uh, my husband and I run North Country Donuts across the street from Tacos and Taps. And we, I think it's fair to say, are on a completely different schedule in life than Paul. Like, we're there early in the morning, usually 2 or 3 a.m., like wiping off the tears and starting to make donuts. And um, 
we're not even very much, like we're not loud. You don't play music in the morning. We have some fans running over our fryers, but even we have received kind of noise complaints from the neighborhood in the past. And I just think that it's partially maybe like the demographic of what lives there or, you know, as Morrisville transitions from a sleepy town to a town that wants businesses to thrive, it's kind of like forming a disconnect with the people that are living around there. But I think that there's always going to be a small portion of people that want to complain about change and want to complain on one end or the other, whether you're there too early or there too late making noise. Um, and I don't know that it's a necessarily a reflection of how extreme the noise is relative to ours since we've gotten it as well. And I think very much that we have a rising tide raises all boats mentality in this town. And if people are coming in to have music at Moogs and Lost Nation and Tacos and Taps, they're going to be here to buy donuts and they're going to be here to get their hair did. And they're going to eat at the local restaurants. And I think it's important that we kind of like nurture a culture downtown that makes people want to go out and stay, even if it's to midnight, which I do think is a very reasonable hour, even though I'm way asleep. But. <laughs> That's when I wake up to make the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Denny, you had a question or comment? Yeah, I'm Dennis Tupacore, old taxpayer in Marshville. I live a mile away. I can't hear anything. So. <laughs> All hit the nail on the head and turn it down to subwoofer. Mm -hmm. Nothing irritates me more than a thug, thug, thug from a subwoofer. I've probably been to more concerts because I'm older than most of these guys. Me too. And I love uh, music. Bob, you know. I mean, I've lost I most of my hearing because of that. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> the thing to look at is what he first said was that thud if that's what people are feeling, if they're feeling the vibration through the building. Because I hear it sitting out on on, on Elmore Street. Little cars, thug, 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 thug. That's all you can hear. It's like, what are you playing for a song? Because all I can hear is thug, thug, thug. And that's what I was going to say. that's the vibration that you'll feel through the building. Yeah. So, I mean, what he said is right. Turn it down. I mean, that could be the issue. But, like I said, I'm a mile away, I can't hear him, so. Go ahead, Don. Eric, Thank if, you. if I heard you correctly before, if, if we did change this ordinance, mm -hmm. there would be a 90-day period More in which, period, it, right. which it would not go into effect. Right. And during it, that time period, people that had concerns could come forward. OK. okay. And then I just have an adjacent. Jason, I don't know if this is a fair question or not, but if we did extend the noise ordinance, what could it mean for law enforcement? I just think, uh, like we're caught in the middle right now. The neighbors will call and they'll complain to us. We'll go over. If we hear the noise, we'll address it. If not, like what happened on Friday night, we'll let you know the owner know that, hey, we've got a complaint. Uh, I think a lot of it's just the location of, of the establishments and just the neighborhood. But I think if we extended the time and made it more clear in the ordinance, that's going to help us out. Because if we get calls before midnight, we're just going to let them know the ordinance is still midnight. So, so I think if we do anything, we need to make it very clear in the ordinance uh, of, of what we're going to say and how, how it's going to be laid out. Yeah, you're going, to, you're going to respond to the people complaining with whatever we have the ordinance saying. Right. And that, that keeps you from saying middleman. There would still be a some somewhat of a limitation on noise, though. I mean, it couldn't be an all-out like on volume. Uh, yeah. no, I, decibel. I think Tom brought up a good point. Maybe you need to put something in there, you know, specifically for a restaurant or a club. Because we also have weddings in town, you know, that are held outside of the village or parties that could come into play here too. Where you know, if you set up on the stagecoach road, they have a big party, and the neighbors are. Complain, it happens all the time uh, in the summertime. So, mm -hmm. just something else to think about. It's not really just limited to the restaurants here in Patton right. Village. Well, it's also well, jake breaks, right. too, exhaust uh, breaks. They can that's be very. Another agenda. <laughs> well, I guess I'd, I'd like to know what. <laughs> I'd like to know what other members of the select board think. I, I've got some <laughs> thoughts, but. I think um, reading through this ordinance presently, I think we could. 
amend D on page nine to um, to include the downtown establishments. Um, Um, and to allow for a Friday and Saturday extension um, till midnight. And I mean, I hesitate to say do it on a trial basis because then, I mean, if we're looking three months into the future, it doesn't go into effect. And then, you know, what does the trial basis give us? Well, on one hand, we saw with, for instance, the ATV issue, if people take issue with this ordinance, then we can say like there's a beginning time and an end time and we'll revisit it then. Um, that kind of <coughs> protects us. Um, but then again, if we if it is a trial basis, like does that just open up for just prolonging the process? So those well, are my thoughts on it. That if we've learned nothing from the ATV issue, the trial basis is a bad route. A bad route. Well, if you're going to make a change yeah. in the ordinance, then propose the change. If people want to band together to oppose the right. change, they have that 90 day period in which to do so. Right. I, I think trial basis is, as I was on the board when that happened, I think it yeah. was no intention. Yeah. I think we, we uh, listened to the results, or in that case, the lack thereof. We heard no complaints on ATVs and extended another year, and then basically all hell broke loose. So, well, Tom wasn't coming to the meetings back then. You're here every yeah. every time now. <laughs> well, also, yeah. I mean, that's. I guess I didn't want to open up that can of worms, but. So we can also do some research. Other communities. I, I'd say other communities. I'm looking for communities with a similar makeup where there's a downtown, the mix of residential and commercial. Right, like Hardwick and Johnson. They've got well, restaurants I, in the downtown. Like, I'd say we're more, to me, we're a more compact downtown. Yeah. Just gonna kind of work around and see what they have for establishments and uh, for ordinances yeah. and perhaps bring some options. And we're looking at probably page well, this is page seven B says loudspeakers amplifiers for advertising. I don't know if that fits there or it would be uh, parties and other social social events or radios and phonographs. I'm not quite sure where it would fit in, but I was saying on page nine where where it would fall under an ex exception. So where it says on page eight, this ordinance shall not be prohibit, prohibit the following. And then we could put it under E where any person, organization, group, or business that has obtained a prior rate waiver from the board of select, and I would change that to people um, instead of select men. And then we could um, outline the down, you know, downtown businesses that however we decide to word it that have you know um that our music venues you know can operate past this time you could also just use the central business zone I mean, right yeah you right live yeah. downtown yeah you're accepting noise you're not living yeah. you're not living just off portland street to have a nice right 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 i mean no one's not making this room of poster downtown to me i think midnight on friday and saturday yeah totally reasonable. yeah right. and i can hear the music and it's great i'm only right. able to walk along the block yeah night. Yeah. So, right. Janice, in response to what you said, oh, can uh, I it, it, go ahead? But just as I said, it, if we don't adjust, and I think it is reasonable that, that the downtown thing, like Tom was saying, these people are, are going to go someplace else. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're attempting to give you the entertainment of <coughs> the town. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. I, I was just going to yeah. piggyback on that, too, is what, what it can do for the town. I mean, and what. Paul and Tom are trying to do with music is that there's nothing like this in Stowe. Now, Stowe's the only other town really that can pull people to it to go out. Now, you can pull people from Stowe for a good time with this downtown. You've got multiple venues. You can have a proper night out here, and it's a better night out than Stowe. It can really pull money from stuff into Morrisville. So can I get you to that or something? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jimmy. <laughs> then I'm just uh, I'm just a patron of these guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Jess, I, I mean, I think there's been a lot of compelling arguments. I, I think you guys have have made a really good case for for what you're what you're asking for. I kind of like the idea of Friday and Saturday night as well. I agree that villages. A different part of the town. I don't live in the village, but I, I can see it as a different part. When I lived in Johnson, I lived in the village. It was very different than where I live now. I'm wondering, you're asking for midnight. I'm wondering if we extended it, maybe not till midnight, 
but would an extension be? Ex would that be uh, <coughs> palatable? I guess is the right right question. I'm thinking like eleven o'clock. I I, I'm just thinking two, two hours is. <laughs> That's why we know you asked for dinner. Two hours. Two hours is, yeah, right. I know it's I mean, my negotiation. Eleven thirty. It's on, but, but I'm thinking eleven thirty. I think midnight. I think midnight is reasonable. I mean, I used to be young. And when and he, when you <laughs> turn he, it he didn't, it he didn't start going out till nine o'clock. Sure. So midnight was middle of the, of the evening. And again, that, what we're creating right here, there really isn't in any other small town that I know of in Vermont. You have Burlington, you have Mount Peculiar over there that has a few venues. Mount Peculiar's like that, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, what we're doing here, uh, it, you just, even in recent weekends, Tom, Tom and I have been, went to both of our establishments. We have musicians here who played at one and then went to the other to see it, the balance of another band, mm -hmm. all in walking True. distance. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and not only just our business, we want other businesses to be able to come in here and stay open. Maybe have like a Euro stand. You know, right. so folks that want to come out and have a light snack, enjoy the, the music, and then, you know, a year on the way home. Yeah. You know, the, or, or the creamy stand. You know, downtown. It, it, just walking in the summertime, we'll get, what, two months here? So in those two months, we should really be able to be out and just walk the three, four different yeah. establishments. And if you're closing yeah. the music down at 10 o'clock, it's really hard to keep people engaged. The music engages folks. Mm -hmm. When I, I know I'm not against it, I can tell you, just a couple weeks ago, my wife and I had been working at the house all day. We're doing interior painting in our house all day long. And we were hungry. We didn't feel like cooking. We worked all day long. And we drove through Morristown. It was quarter of seven in the evening. And there was not one place open. We went everywhere. We went to your place, we went to Ten Railroad, we went to Moog's, we went to Hoagie's, they were just closed the kitchen. And you know what we did? We went to Stowe. And I'm like, this was is terrible. Did you say it was a Tuesday? It was a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> and I could not believe it. My wife is listening right now. She, yeah. she could vouch for me. Tuesdays are the worst. And so we went, the only place we found was Sushi Yoshi that would even or, serve food. I'm like, to, what is wrong with Johnson, this community? You can go to Johnson and go to Moog's. That's what I So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I would have gone to Johnson. I almost went to Hardwick to positive pie. Yeah. But I'm like, what is wrong with Morseville? I want I, I promote anybody that wants to come here. Well, we just opened up on Monday nights tonight. Wow. And we prefer to be open seven days. I couldn't days. believe it. We, yeah. we looking at each other like, what are we doing? This is Mayberry, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's not uh, what we want this town. David yeah, my, my wife would say, yeah. <laughs> you know, and anyway. just to touch on, on the, the Friday and Saturday night, you know, that's, that helps me on Friday and Saturday night. My biggest night of the week is Wednesday. And that's when we have multiple musicians from surrounding towns. Right. Johnson, Cambridge. We have... 17 year olds that come out as a, as a trio and just kill it. Bass, guitar, drums, and you know, uh, Greensboro, again, Mount Pillar. We have a lot yeah. of folks coming from, lots of folks coming from Stowe. Well, you get no fight from me. I'm like, I, mean, I get up at 3 a.m. every every day, you know. But I don't live in town. I live outside of town. <laughs> oh yeah, if you get donuts at 3, I'll stop by. And go. <laughs> well, they want you to make those. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so we have a, I'm we making have a question. We have another question here, and another maybe comment yeah. right here. Yeah, just a quick comment. I'm Phil Rosenblum, and uh, I live in High Park, but I grew up here. I'm part of Little Money Union High School, and I've seen Morrisville go through a lot of different waves and. Feels, and I feel like right now there's a lot of this potential for us to be bringing these people in, you know, boosting the economy, making it an enjoyable place to be with these businesses. I've recently started my own business, a recording studio here in town, and I just think that, you know, there's that should be kept in mind, and also that it's unprecedented kind of what's happening when you're talking about looking at, you know, surrounding towns and what they're doing about this. It's not going to be completely relevant because of the mix of the central location of Morrisville and what's here and what's happening here. I think it's a potential for the town to kind of take advantage of that and bring in a lot of economy here and make it a fun place to be. So keeping that in mind. Thank you. David. I mean, I just had a couple of comments. One was that most venues don't start their music until 9 o'clock. No. Um, they don't. Uh, last summer, I had friends of Bill's um, only opened up my apartment because I wasn't going to be around, so I opened up an apartment to a group of musicians. I was so happy to be able to provide that so that they could get out here and play. 
Um, a lot of times I won't go to Burlington because it, you know, to start to wait to music till nine and it doesn't end till one, and I'm not getting home until two thirty. It it's kind of a bummer. I'd love to see more music in Morrisville. This this is um, the town really needs the cultural shift to become really what the town wants, to be a walkable downtown, to be a town town where people stay here um, and, and get their entertainment here. Because I, I, I don't want to go to Burlington if I can find a good band here. Um, and I'd love to see more good bands come here. You know, there's, there's, some, there's some great bands that will come here. If there's a venue like the Oxbow that can stay open until midnight, you know, but they're not going to start their music. Really, you could, you could, the, the Oxbow is big enough to run a fairly decent festival for a weekend and have, you know, multiple bands here. And the whole downtown would benefit from that. Um, We'd get a lot of complaints on that. If anybody has not been to Asheville, North Carolina, that place is awesome. If you ever want to go see a, a town that is hopping because they have, they have opened up the bars and opened up the streets and made it walkable and made it a music mecca. That place, go there. That place is amazing, and it's all through the whole down, all, all through downtown Asheville. It, Morrisville could be that if you really could. Now, another thing, I just want to comment about Tom's business. I I didn't know there was a a noise ordinance that I wasn't supposed to work in the building until two o'clock in the morning, but I often do. Um, when I'm up here working and when I've been in the building working on structural stuff, I never heard his music. I never heard any noise from across the street. It's not because I was making noise all the time, but because and that building was wide open. So I should have heard noise if it was that loud. I always wondered how the people upstairs tolerated it but in the apartment, but apparently they do. They must like, you know, they're, they're into it. Um, but I just was going to say that if I couldn't hear the music all night long from across, right across the street, then I don't see how the noise is getting out to fur further out into the community where it's bothering people. Um, but I did talk about it, about how to soundproof that building. And one of the things with new construction is you don't have windows that are letting vibration through because sound travels is a vibration. You don't have the new construction, the buildings are tighter. And as things get upgraded in town, it's going to change how loud people are hearing things. So I, I really hope that, you know, I tap, talk, tap to tacos or tacos and tap. I, I would. I didn't know you guys were in town, but I, you know, I've been working in Southern Vermont a lot. But I hope I can come and visit your venues. I want to. I want to experience Morrisville differently than what I have in the past, which has been really very little to do here. And it's nice to have these things. And like you said, it'd be nice to go out at midnight and get a, get something to eat. Nice to go to seven and get something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, that's what people are doing at six and seven. They're getting something to eat. Then they want to go see music. It doesn't start until eight or nine a lot of times. Yeah. So I'm getting the sense that the board may make a change on this ordinance here. I think Eric's going to bring some to us. And, and um, for me, it's just how much time to add to this. Midnight, Friday and Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether we go for the full two hours. Yeah. Just That's seems it. like a, a lot to put on to the village. Mm. Go ahead. Can I just say that, like, first of all, we're coming into summer. It doesn't even get dark until nine. So, like, 11, it's like, yeah, it takes a while for people to kind of, like, get out of their house and come here. We also have a ton of people here who work in the service industry, in the like <clears> Stowe, <throat> for instance, and they come back through on their way to Hardwick, on their way to Johnson, whatever. Um, they're not getting out of work until 10. So... 11 is like doesn't they won't even be there until almost 11 most likely um i also just really want to reiterate that like the businesses are supporting it's not just supporting moves place and tacos and chats like paul i have a new business that i've only had for a year paul's supporting me by like buying my 
products to put into cocktails and into a zero proof menu, which is also totally unique, like providing options for people who are sober to go out and enjoy themselves. Um, him having all these people, like we have musicians in the front row, Bill's business, like he's going into elementary schools and playing music for people and like teaching kids about instruments. He wouldn't be able to do that without the supplemental income from that. And also, in line with like people in the service industry, et cetera, like it would be nice to have that not just Friday and Saturdays um, because a lot of people's days off, at least like people our age, a lot of people's days off are like maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Tom, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I'm all for this, but, but, it, it's not from the, but my concern is, all of my concern is having the people having an opportunity that don't want to come on in here. And if they hear, I think, what I heard tonight from these folks, that maybe they'll be more uh, considerate of the noise. But you're going to have 90 days to. Yeah, for people to if they have, a, have a, some sort of objection to the to the thing they can come in here and, and uh, express it. That's my concern. Just the people have a chance, and they're going to have a chance. Okay, Brian, you've been pretty quiet. I'm <coughs> Brian's a party animal. He is a party animal. <laughs> no, one thing you do that hasn't been mentioned, these guys are trying to make a living. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, if there's any way we can help them a little bit, and right. try to get people to enjoy their music. You know, I know when we've had the Oxbow things, you know, a lot of them people set up on top. I see Carrot over there sitting there with you doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I don't want Nashville. <laughs> All, right. All right, so what do you want to do? do we, but if Eric's going to bring us some um, op, um, options, not so sorry. Right? Other language? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's another word there. And then you can make a motion when you see those. That's yeah. how it fits best yeah. here in our community. And, uh, and once you, you pass a motion. Uh, the, the clock. Mm -hmm. and, and that way our police officers won't be stuck in the middle, which they always are. Because I know Jason's a nice guy. He doesn't want to be stuck in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, he's just trying to do his job. Yeah. Tom. I, I think that, you know, Paul and I are going to work with the town and with the police, you know, uh, as best as we can, you know, I guess within the next 90 days or within the next... 10 years we're here doing business um, to, uh, you know, uh, do whatever we can to be cordial to our neighbors, to the town, while, um, you know, we're trying to make a living. But, um, you know, I see this five years from now getting revisited saying, okay, well now all these younger people who moved to Morrisville, if we're not there for them, they're going to go someplace else. So we're, we're going to work as best as we can with you all. And, and Friday and Saturday would be a great, great help now. And, and, uh, Good start. Uh, we're just going to communicate with the town and the police department. And we're going to do our best to get it right um, for you. You know the right answers, don't you, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> when I opened up business 11 years ago, I had County Plumbing had to put that grease trap in the bar. And yeah. The first thing Tom said to me was, Morrisville is a great little town to do business in. Mm -hmm. And it really is. It is. And, and look how it's growing right now. I want to grow with it. Thank you. Mike, you've been quiet back there. Yeah. Um, I'm in for this. I think everybody here in one way or another is for it because it's going to benefit the community. Um, one thing I will ask, and it's more about for personal reasons, is um, for the next 90 days, and I'm going to ask, ask the police department to hold off from giving any tickets and stuff. I've seen Paul when things are crazy there, and I've seen him when things aren't so crazy, but he's very respectful. And if, if, if somebody walks in and says, Paul, you got to bring it down, He's going to turn around. He's not going to argue. Mm -hmm. and I, just, Would you, I, just, I just want to stop you. You say your name. I, we all know uh, you. But. Uh, Mike Horn. And uh, I just like to think that, you know, Paul, you know, I mean, I, 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 you've seen me in there. We go, I, my wife and I go there regularly once a week. 
Um, I just don't want to see him get shut down before the 90 days goes by and then sit there and go, okay, the man's got to pay his employees, uh, pay his bills, and he's out of business for 90 days or whatever the distance is. Right. If we can just, you know, Paul, I know we'll work with whoever he needs to, but if we can just get a little reprieve for 90 days till this gets all settled out legally and right. Uh, I'm not saying the police not to go in. I want right. them to still do their job, but I don't want them to sit there and go press forward and hire those four copies. Uh, I really don't want to see that. If right. you just ease through the next 90 days, I really appreciate that as a, as a member of the community. I like that idea. Exactly. And I know you, I knew he's a patron because I've been there a few times and you're there every time I go in there, so. <laughs> it's not a bad place, trust me, it's not. <laughs> Try the steak taco. <laughs> yes. Is, is, that an, um, is that something we can act on or is that in terms of? We can talk to Jason. It's a, it's a town ordinance, so it's not right. like you can change that. Right, right. Yeah. So. yeah. But I mean, I think it's kind of like Eric was saying, the reasonable standard and we're not looking to Give Paul more tickets by any means. Right. We haven't had issues since October with music that we can hear from inside our PD, so I don't foresee an issue there. But. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? You work with them. And you'll draw something up, Eric. I will bring you back some options. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. All right. Thank you. Thank can you. we move on to the next item? Yes, yes. please. Next Thanks everyone is, for coming in. Appreciate yeah, thank you, thank you everyone for coming in. That's good guess. <laughs> These meetings are great. You can come every other Monday. <laughs> it's being answered right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe we have a jam session here. <laughs> All right, we'll move to uh, review and approve paving beds. Kevin, you're smiling. It's a bad smile. I know, I heard. <laughs> I talked to Eric for quite a while. It's I, an uncomfortable smile. Oh. Oh. I wonder if we have to. Is it evil because the prices are really high? I think when we talk about the prices going high, I'm going to jump in and cut Kevin off a little bit. We have to deal with the bids that are in front of us. Okay. Uh, we've gotten an inkling of where prices are at this point in time. But these are the bids that were submitted, and I would ask you to look at the numbers here rather than ask to put Kevin on the spot to find out what today's price is for Blacktop. Uh, I think that there, there are other discussions to have here. There is volatility in the, in the petroleum market, which directly affects all of these folks here. Every one of these companies has great reputations. Uh, we have no issue working with any one of them. The problem and the concern that I have right now is because of the volatility, uh, they're, they're asking us to leave open on a broad base case the ability to raise the price. Okay. And the more the price goes up, the less pavement we're going to be able to buy, the shorter the distance we can cover. And uh, I, I, um, I, I uh, beat this around quite a bit today. Run up the cabinet. Uh, so, I'm at, so I guess I would ask you this. I would ask you to look at the numbers throughout the bid process, not just the end number. Because I guarantee you the end number is going to change significantly in an upwards fashion. I don't see uh, in, in a day when uh, prices are this low that we're looking at bids that are $9 less than what we paid last year for, for time. For time. Mm -hmm. So I would look at the other numbers in there. Uh, within the bid and determine which one you feel is going to give you the, the, the best or most fair offer. I guess is the way I would look at it. It's a very difficult decision this year. Uh, I don't think it's an easy year for any of these companies to do bidding in. Uh, but I, I have to voice a concern for the taxpayers that to leave an open-ended broad base as far as the rise in the price makes it nearly impossible for Kevin. Uh, to build a plan if the price rises to a level that we don't have enough payment to cover what we need to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly have discussed that as an option. Uh, but we have grant monies that we've received and we have to put that money toward those roads. And if you've traveled from the corners and Morristown corners, 
north to Katie's Falls, there is a section of that road that doesn't need to be resurfaced. Okay. When the price continues to climb unchecked and without a cap, um, it puts everything else at risk if we make that our priority road. Garfield is also a priority, and it's going to be the largest hog for the, the volume of tonnage this year because it's a complete rebuild of the blacktop. So we have a lot of things to consider here, and I'm struggling to give you advice on which way to go, but I think the best thing to do at this point is to look at the numbers and throughout the bid, not just the final number, which I was guilty of doing when I sat on the board myself. But uh, in comparison here, there are some numbers that, that uh, fluctuate depending on what you're looking at. So uh, it's, it's really the totality of the circumstances what you're looking here. I understand what you're saying, but I don't know how to do that. Yeah, thank you. Can you explain <laughs> well, what you mean? You, you guys have both studied it a lot more. You know, I was, of course, I was on the phone with you for a long time. You had my head spinning for a while, but I think I figured it out. Okay. And, but. I would wanted more of a recommendation from you guys because I know you know it backwards and forwards and sideways now. And I understand it some, but for the benefit of everybody here on the board, if you could um, explain it the way you see it, you know, or what is the best option for us. Can I, can I ask one question too? Um, you said that it's, um, it's bound to fluctuate, but it looks like on all these bids, um, it says these are, these, these numbers are good for 14 days or or 30 days. Does that mean if we chose one tonight and we do, do we have to pay in full? It's locked in, yeah. It's locked in. It's upon receiving the invoice, which yeah. we don't typically get an invoice. Until they're stuff. done. Right. Oh, okay. We, we want right. money to one line. Right. Right. Okay. okay. July right. first. Uh, that's I, I wanted okay. to clarify that. And then and then we still it still be subject to fluctuate, even at, at, until the work is totally done. Okay. I'm going to let Kevin explain yeah. further about the, yeah. the price hikes and when those happen because he's had direct contact with some of the bidders on this mm -hmm. and they've explained how, you know, the day of the month that they all hold their breath. Yeah. And Dr. Yeah. Garden is on the line right now. He's from Pike. He's a Pike representative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he can help explain this as well. Uh, the material that they use to make the asphalt is the price of that goes up. Well, the price is set the beginning of each month by the state of Vermont because that's what they have to go by. So when these bids, they went by the 1st of April, and uh, Pike's bid was at $655 a ton for that material to be put into our asphalt. As of today, with the state, that price is now seven, uh, $719 a ton. And this weekend, we saw $6 a gallon for diesel fuel. If these prices continue or even stabilize right now, I don't see this going back now. Um, I don't know, Geiger, if you have anything else you'd like to add to that? Can you hear us? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, Welcome. So, this price increase, this is a, this is a, um, well, the asphalt price adjustment. It's a it's an industry standard thing, and um, every contractor we're not just like hypothetically adding on to the cost. Um, everybody would have the same increase, um, and it's based off a posting of an average price of asphalt cement. That's the sticky stuff that's in asphalt petroleum based stuff. That's what you know the rocks we can with the price increase of that but it's the, it's the uh the liquid asphalt petroleum based uh material that the price is going crazy right now and uh, we all based our bids off of the uh april 2022 um posting by vtrans we also mirror the uh same posting that uh state of new york uses it's a it's a, someone who does a lot of research and says the average purchase price for that month. Um, so the April 22, um, it was 655. So that's where the, how the, that's how all of our bids are, um, are based on. And then, so then when it comes to actually, when you construct the road, when you pave the road, uh, say it was, it would be in, you know, July or August, whatever the posting is for that month, 
then you take the difference of whatever that posting is to uh, 655, multiply it by the amount of tons of liquid asphalt used, um, which is approximately about 5% of the, of the total weight of asphalt, typically, is what the amount of liquid asphalt you use. And um, then you multiply that that by by the by that difference. So so would be the the seven nineteen right now minus six fifty five. So that's seventy bucks or something like that times the amount of tons being used. That's what we would charge, and every every company would charge the same. So right now, if you were to do it. Um, so say um, like so I know I haven't heard what the bid results over, but Pike's you know bid was seventy six dollars a ton. Right now, if we were to pave in May, it's they did make a significant jump from April to May. It went up to seven hundred nineteen dollars a ton. Do the math, and that's an overall increase of like two dollars and eighty eight cents I calculated per ton. So that would be then $78.88 would be Pike's new price. If we were to pave in the month of April, May. However, the price might go down. This is as high as I've ever seen it. Um, High as it's probably been since 08 when things went crazy. The whole you know, what happened in 08. Um, we hope that it's not going to go up any a huge amount more than this, but it's really hard to say. So, Kevin, what I understand yeah. is that the, the numbers we see in front of us could possibly change, but they're all going to change, and it's based on the numbers coming out of Montpelier. Correct. And as I'm looking at all these estimates that I've got here, uh, I see that Mr. the Hutchins Incorporated started, they went with a March 22 um, price per ton, and Pike went with a April, April right. 22 more current. price per ton, more current. So the okay. Hutchins one was 21, no, the price per ton was 624 in March, and then Pike's is 655 in April. Mm -hmm. So that price itself may more accurate. Well, it makes the two bits very similar. They, yeah, well, that means you're getting more money right now. What? Can I ask a question? Um, you're saying six fifty-five. Where does it say that? I'm seeing seventy-six dollars. Sure, yeah, yeah. no, oh, okay. On, okay. on the actual bid. On the actual bid. Okay. That's fault. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being with us here tonight. You know, that, that makes a lot of uh, difference in my mind um, because you explained it well. It and I actually was leaning, leaning toward this one anyway. But I know all three are very reputable businesses. And so what I was talking about as far as looking at the numbers, I, I think that uh, no matter how you slice the numbers, the SBI only did is the absolute highest in the categories of reclaiming we are double, right. more than double the reclaiming cost of the other companies. Yes, they are. The cost per ton on the hot mix yeah. is probably reflected by the they own their own hot mix plant. So they have to buy the hot mix from those that do. Uh, Hutchins and Pike obviously both have their own plants. So that's that works to their advantage. So if we can uh, agree to uh, look at strictly the Pike and J. Hutchins bids, yeah. okay. you're in agreement there? Yep. Yeah. I would look at the cost of the, excuse me, the tonnage estimate. Price and per ton. Look at the price per ton. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the difference of one month, uh, yeah, negligible. It, it make, it's negligible because if, if you brought um, production price up accordingly in, in the same month, it probably be the same or more. So now you're looking at the, ton, the tons, the tonnage estimate. There's a 300 ton difference. Uh, Pike has it 300 tons more than Hutchins. Right. Uh, the price per uh, reclaiming is less for Pike. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Pike, is, that's the so most if, tonnage. So if you take the 300 ton difference that Pike has estimated, 
yeah. multiply by their listed price per ton and subtract that from their total bid. Their price is cheaper. Lower right. Than the bid. Right. That's what I did at home today. That's, after you. That's why I was, I was kind of. I didn't, I didn't want to be so forward to give you all that to you. Right. It's like the teacher giving you the test and giving the answer. But good. that's what I was doing. Yeah, when I you tried walking toward that. I'm yeah. Sorry, being mm -hmm. mystical about it, but there's a lot of information to go here, Brad. I appreciate you being here explaining the industry for us. It's uh, it's a mystery to most of us, uh, lay persons that don't work in that field. So, uh, you know, when you're comparing the two bids, I would I would look uh, out of the total tonnage. I think that when you're looking at the price per ton and the total cost estimate. Yet Ireland and Hutchins, who had almost identical volume right. estimates, uh, Pike came in with 300 ton more. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you subtract the 300 ton to bring that in line with the other two bids, they're cheaper. To make it all even, the their cheapest. price, the total price, is actually lower. Yeah. So it's, it's about comparing all the numbers within the bid process. He's got his hand up. I can interject. Go ahead, Brett. Mind. Um, I, I try to tell this to, to all folks. It doesn't matter whether it's in my favor or not. I just think that uh, trying to help educate. Um, um, typically, the, and the way the state does this is they'll provide the unit quantities for the contractor as an estimated unit quantity. Um, if, if, and the reason is still, it's just about price per ton, right? Um, when you pave a road, if you're putting a, 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 a well Randolph Road, we're saying a half inch shim in an inch and a half top course, so two 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 lifts as we call it. If you do that the way you're supposed to do it, um, everybody's going to use the same amount of tons. It's just all estimated. So the quantities really shouldn't be factored very 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 little. Um, everybody it, it should install the same quantities unless they're um trying to do something that they're not supposed to do um if we if we do the work the way it's specified we'll all use the same quantities so the, the quantities are just a just an estimate um and it's the it's the unit price that really should be uh it's really 100 percent the what the, really the only thing that should be factored in um other than the companies or whatnot but the, the uh, I strongly believe that um, that so take that what it's worth. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What's, and our, I'm what's our history of working with these that's, three companies? We that's worked with all three of them. Yeah, and good. Over the years, uh, all three of them has an excellent uh, okay, good. Yeah. Do we Hutchins have an example did. of of recent projects? Yeah, Hutchins just did the. Hutchins did Washington Highway last yeah. year. Too. Yeah, and and what about Pike? What have they, they done recently? A few years ago, they did a big, big part of our oh, paving. Oh. Well, did, Brett knows about it. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Um, the road in front of the town. Down out here? In front of the Was town. Of all the those streets? Of course road. Of course road. I forget what that's called. Yeah, I know that we've done all three of them. We've had good luck with all three of them. A few okay. years. Yeah. The last thing I was going to ask, if you don't mind, I've waited here um, patiently. If you could just provide me with the, I think I'm the only represent contractor representative here with the with the bid res, with the unofficial bid results, the unit prices for each contractor. You can have them there in open meeting now. You can have them. What are you looking for? Price per ton, rep? Yep. Price per ton from Jay Hutchins was seventy five dollars and forty eight cents. SD Ireland was ninety one dollars and seventy cents. Um, you want the reclaim and what was the reclaim price pricing? Reclaim price. Pricing. Yeah, reclaim price. yeah. But, uh, Ireland is three dollars and fifty cents. Hutchins was a dollar sixty seven. That was the big difference. Yeah, huge. That's that's what pushed uh, Ireland right out for me yeah. mm -hmm. before we even came here. And I was leaning toward Pike at home after he explained that, and, and it's true, it ends up being cheaper per, you get more for less. Well, I think there's a reality theory. to, to the bid. I mean, certainly, if it's 9,100, then it's 9,100. Right. But if it's less, they're not going to charge us for 9,100. Right. They charge us for what they put on the ground. 
Well, I also appreciate him being here tonight. He sat through two and a half hours of all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Riveting. 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 You know, I mean, that means something. It does. If you're going to show up and, and be present and help us educate, get educated on this. You're looking for a motion? Yes, please. I make a motion. We accept the bid by Pike Industries. In the amount? In the amount of... The total cost? $717,312.50. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? Yes. So, is that how we're going to do this? Because if it goes up more, it's going to go up. It's, we have no control. Are we going to add more to it, though? Because we need the number. So are we, we going to take some roads out? We'll, we'll have to adapt to what we have for money versus uh, what the price per ton is and how far it go. Right. So we got the, the number we just put in there, we've got. Okay. So are you, Brian, are you saying that if um, the price goes up, will we have to revisit this and no. reapprove? No. We're only going to approve for 717000 no. no. But it may change no. how much you're, we do. You're approving, the, you're approving Pike Industries as the contract with you agent. Okay. As to what managing the, the total dollars we have to spend, that's between Kevin, myself, and, and Pike Industries, okay. as far as us saying, hey, guys, there's no more money. You know, that we can right. stop at right. this point in time. And every honest day, one of the contractors will work with you on that. Right. So maybe we don't don't have that 727 in there. The right. volatility of the market is not much for distance paid. The volatility of the market on them is the cost per ton. So we ought, we have to balance it out and watch where we're at when they start putting the hot mix down. We, we know the price wants to solve over time. Right. Well, so what we're saying is, do we put the number in the Don't motion? put the number in then. I would prefer you didn't. Yeah. Because okay. then the auditor's going to want to see $717,000. Well, Don just struck that from his motion. <laughs> Consider it struck. <laughs> For me a second. That makes sense. Is that, yeah. 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 That's what I was wondering too, that number, the main number. Okay, is there any further discussion on this? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right. Number three, review and approve the police cruiser purchase. Jason. We're just looking to trade in two cruisers, uh, 2015 Chevy Malibu and a 2014 Chevy Tahoe, and trade them in for uh, to use Toyota Highlander, only has 4,000 miles on it. And we're going to pay for that through some of our $20,000 IU money and the remaining will come out of our CGA funds, our CGA funds. Plus the trade in those two vehicles. Okay. Toyota. Getting rid of the Malibu finally, huh? It's time. Ronnie's not going to like that. Yeah, no. He has a Dodge Charger now. Yeah, I saw that. Does it, does any more um, have to be done to the car? Like they have to. Upgrade it, do other there things to it? There is some outfitting uh, charges, but most of it's used. We're, we're going to reuse a lot of the equipment we oh. already have. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be minimal. Good. I assume losing two vehicles for one leaves you with plenty? It still does, correct. The reason we had two is we had two canine cars. So that 14 Tahoe was an old canine car, and now we only have one canine, so. And the car has about 100,000 miles on it. Good. And this is the purchase, not lease, correct? Correct, purchase. And warranty? There is a, yeah, it's a, I don't have that in front of me, but it's a bumper to bumper warranty. Quite a lot. It's a Toyota care package. Uh, maintenance is included. They'll come pick it up, bring it back to their dealership, which is why we end up going with them. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, the, the lifetime handy care. Hmm. Yeah, we we like warranties, don't we, Brian? Yes. <clears throat> There's a suggested motion up there somewhere. Yes, there is. I moved to purchase the 2021. <clears throat> 
Minnesota Highlander for the police department for $24,270. This price includes trading in a 2015 Chevy Malibu for $10,000 and a 2014 Chevy Tahoe for $8,000. <coughs> funds to be utilized from the SIU revenue and DEA funds. I authorize Eric Dodge to sign on the select board's behalf. Second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Jason. What is, is this the cost? No, that's a certificate of liability for the building. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, next, approve and sign local emergency management plan. So, Local emergency management plan is a document that has to be uh, revisited on an annual basis. Right. Uh, it discusses uh, resources, storage operations, science, small divisions. There's a lot of information, resource information about the local entities, uh, the department of the emergency. And those change. That's why it's an annual, uh, annual revisit. Uh, I sent a preliminary draft over to LCPC, to Alec Jones, who is their representative for these matters. Uh, he did a review of it and uh, picked up one mistake that I made. I had the, the location of the EOC reversed uh, between the two documents, and uh, so I made that change in this one. And then I added more information on the athletes, uh, which just enriches the content of the document. And this is something we've done every year for. It is. And yeah. Yeah. And this this document and the next one we're we'll reviewing are necessary to be in place in order for you to receive receive FEMA reimbursement from the time ago. Yeah. Why one of these is not in place, you don't get any money. All right. Do we hear a motion regarding this? I make a motion. We accept the local emergency management plan. Okay. I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? And it authorized the board chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Don and a second by Judy. Is there any further dis discussion? Um, I'm I'm curious to know. Thank you. Um, and forgive me for not asking this before tonight. I know it's really late, but um, I did. Um, I I was looking through the plan development process, and um, I'm just curious. I'm I'm. I'm thinking about climate change, and um, I know this is this is a yearly process, right? That we're signing up on this. Yeah. I'm just thinking about climate change and um, the risks um, to Morristown and Morrisville around flooding and high winds. And um, I'm wondering if there were any extra there's if there's been an ongoing um, process where extra measure, measures are taken um, to consider the um, higher rate of incidents or high, higher risk of incidents around flooding and. Um, and winds, um, and I also noticed, so that's part A of my question and part B. Um, I remember when I was first on the board, um, it did come up that, uh, when I was first in my um, interim position, um, it did come up that there was a plan development process and uh, an opportunity for public input. And I do remember saying, well, can we put this um, in an electronic form? Because it seemed to me I mean, like, who knows? Like, I don't know how um, invested or involved people care to be around this process, but um, I, it seemed to me that it wasn't incredibly accessible. Um, I did ask if it could be um, electronically available, and then I was told, well, like, a Google form wouldn't work because not everyone has a Google account. Um, but I'm, I'm just, I'd like to know um, for the future um, what what we could do to make that input process a little more accessible. Um, do you know, does that make sense to you? Um, you have to yeah. get the input from the public? Maybe? Yeah, um, because there was a public notice of the plan was posted on the town's website and there's a community service that was, survey that was posted on the town's website, but um, not very many people replied. And I mean, it may just be that people aren't concerned, but I also, um, I think that um, in terms of like, especially flood mitigation, like I'm saying flood mitigation, um, I'm thinking about um, roads, I'm thinking about, um, you know, like more intense storms that we're having. 
that people might actually have input if they knew that um, there was opportunity to input um, just around concern around like, oh, well, I've lived here for, you know, 20 years and I've noticed like a big change in, in a washout in this area of, you know, of the road where I live or, you know, just like more, more data from um, residents. Um, and then a final thing that I, I was also wondering, like how certain things were prioritized because um, it looked like infectious disease was like super low on the community hazard risk. Are you Am I in the wrong one? Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. You say you lost me a bit ago. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. where is she going? Okay, with never this? mind. I'll save that for the next That's one. That's the next one. Okay. The local emergency management plan is not an action based plan. Okay, it sorry. The plan that simply states the resources you have available. In the yes, right. Uh, okay. And those are all listed in those tables and whatnot. It also talks about EOC location. Oh, it's kind of a good yeah. Never mind. Plan. Uh, and this is not one that we, we put out for public view. Right. It, simply is a, a it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong. I, okay. I really did my homework, but in the wrong venue. So sorry. is there any further discussion no. on this motion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. I just want to say it's a nice document. I did read through it carefully. Yeah. It's a good document. Because they no one's asked a question about it in the last 15 years <laughs> that I know of. Well, but. I wasn't even... <laughs> yeah, you didn't mean to, right? I didn't mean to, sorry. Okay, next. And approve new hire for administrator assistant to the town administrator. No, we have to. No. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. Review and approve the local hazard, the local hazard mitigation plan. Sorry. This only comes uh, around in five one. years, so there won't be any confusion next year. It won't be the LEMP. So, mm -hmm. so the LHMP is uh, a five year uh, revisit. This is, uh, this does speak to an action plan. It does speak to history, um, um, responses, uh, again, some of it is availability of resources as well, because it talks about the fire department and the, we had to re, uh, revisit the trucks themselves and update, get rid of old trucks that are no longer in our inventory and add the new ones that are. Uh, so there's a, a lot more uh, going on in this plan. It actually has a, a review process uh, through emergency management. They are the reviewer pre, uh, preliminary going to FEMA. Um, they're the criteria. We used a consultant on this one, uh, followed her, uh, her guidance in developing the plan, and uh, the emergency management came in at the end, uh, and upon initial review did not pass us. There were some items missing. Um, the consultant worked with modern emergency management, uh, made those changes and adjustments and information adds and uh, got it through and we, we got our approval from our emergency management. We posted the the uh, survey that Jess was discussing earlier on the, the town website. Uh, we, we put notices out from first form on the Facebook page. We let people know it was out there. Uh, we had five people respond, two of them were town employees. So mm -hmm. it, it's not a it's, it's not a riveting topic until <laughs> it's riveting. Right. Until yeah. rivers are popping out. So right. um, then it becomes really important to everybody. But in the interim, it's, it's hard to generate uh, interest. focus and interest to fill out surveys of any kind. Because we're bombarded, bombarded with surveys every day. It seems like I know I am. Um, but and there's perhaps a more creative way to get the word out or to get involved in that. Just I don't disagree with that. It's, it's disheartening to only three people <laughs> no. took the time to fill out the right. survey for this because it. It is an important document. There's a lot right. of information in there. Um, part of the review process was them making uh, suggestions to improve the plan. So there's a, a going forward, there's a, the ability to continue to build on this. Uh, but it's every five years that we have to have a review at the uh, state and federal level for approval. Just your comments, that really beats up the flood hazard part of the hazard mitigation plan. Yeah. So okay. that's the first time it really got a rewrite in many, many years. And it badly needed it. So mm -hmm. it is a much better plan than you saw six, seven years ago. Last okay. time I through this. Okay. And, the, and also, I was curious um, that there, it, doesn't, it doesn't rate infectious disease. at um, it, it puts it at a very low risk. But obviously, we just survived a huge infectious disease issue. So I was just curious, like, if this has to do with us getting funding and why that infectious disease rating is so low. And to get the funding, this, this is simply a check the box. Okay. Um, 
but the content to move to infectious disease, I think uh, the frequency of the event is what they're looking at more. You're more inclined to see an ice storm or a heavy rainstorm oh, mm -hmm. event than we are to see an infectious disease event, yeah. even though we're still dealing with early disease. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, one, one in a hundred years they've identified this as a pandemic. So I think it's based on frequency just one of the Okay. Um, and sorry, one more question, because this always um, interests me because I wonder about like certain development or redevelopment, especially in our downtown area. Um, for the hazardous spill sites, um, do we like is there is there funding available um, to, to do some mitigation? Is there anything, um, you know, any are there any actionable items around that or is that again just we have to document it and we just have to document okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And as far as money is available, unless there's an excavation going to happen at those sites, mm -hmm. typically brownfield sites get covered. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, they, right. they don't. They got to dig in on that. Must be a really good reason. Uh, mm -hmm. The most recent run out I would say is the LHP Village Center project. Mm -hmm. They had hazardous materials in the basement. It cost an arm and a leg, but they they had those excavator removed and, and taken off site. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time. You'll just see a uh, development happen over the top of um, Foundry Street is an example of that. That was a mountain site down there. Right. They didn't disturb the earth. They poured concrete over the top of it and built a beautiful little uh, neighborhood down there. Funding is an issue. Generally, it's owner restrictions. Previous owner restrictions is the issue. Like the Sunoco, for example. There's not. There's ample funding to, to do re redevelopment, but you really, it's the covenants that Carnot puts on as the real development, redevelopment restriction. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I hear a motion regarding this? Yes, I move to accept the local hazard mitigation plan and authorize the board chair to sign on behalf of this report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on it? I have just one question, and that is um, in regards to the flood insurance, there's 20, I believe it's 22 properties are identified in town as being in a flood hazard area, I forget the exact stipulation there, but only two have insurance. And in the document, multiple times, it talks about us encouraging those other 20 property owners to get flood insurance. What are we doing to, what is that process to encourage them to try and get insurance? Same language as the town plan, the exact same language. Uh, it's actually not public who has, uh, Policies aren't public who's insured, who's not insured. There are certain people like myself, I'm your community flood zone administrator, who can access that information. I've put in a request into the feds June. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting to hear back. I follow up every, every month or so, and the guys are still working on it. So it's a very long process to deal with the federal government. It takes a long time. So I'm hoping to hear by June, maybe even one year, just to get the 21 properties that are, uh, that are susceptible to flooding and have repetitive loss issues. I'm just trying to figure out really the repetitive loss issues. I don't really care about all 21. Right. I care about the ones that have had claims and how do we make those more flood resilient and I can't get the information. So I'm doing my best I can, but. And there's only two or three of those if I remember correct, correctly. Correct, exactly. Okay. And our bylaw, our flood zone bylaw does contain language. For example, if you are a repetitive loss structure and your structure is damaged in by more than 50% of its value. Torn you down. To, you have to, re, no, you have to raise it up. Oh, raise it you up. You have to raise it up Rebuild above the base flood level. And actually we go higher than the federal minimums. We require you to raise any damaged structure, substantial damage, substantially damaged structure to two feet above the base elevation. So in theory, next hundred year storm, you're high and dry. So we do have those protections that are above and beyond those federal and state minimums in our plan, in the, in the, in the plan already. So I think we're well covered. And for Vermont, for the area, for the Little Moyle River, we're actually pretty darn flood resilient compared to other communities like Jeffersonville or Johnson. Yes, we're in, we're in a good place. Other communities are not. Okay. And is that not just naturally based on where we are, or our actual measures that we're doing to Me little about geography yeah. measures? Yeah. Measures help as well. Dams help as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we regulate it. And mm -hmm. I was looking at new build sites in Johnson that are literally at top of the river. Day. I was like, wow, that would never happen in Morrisville, and there'll be a loss site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so Amy. I'll add to this. So you know, uh, there won't be. We'll have to coordinate the signature. Through this process and the review of BEM, they inform us that the village of Morseville is also an entity because they have their own bounds number 
Mm -hmm. uh, and they have to have a hazard mitigation plan. However, they said that if we uh, wanted to adjust it a little bit, that they could be covered under this plan as well. So I forwarded the document to Penny. Uh, she's sending it off of her board uh, at the time in addition to the agenda item for their meeting this week. And hopefully they'll get their approval as well. Uh, we just had to change some stuff, some wording in the, the document to read as Town of Morristown slash Village of Morristown or select words, so right. Village Trustees in many places. And, uh, so I'll sign that when that happens. So we're getting me in touch with you as soon as Carl Fortune and get you two together at the same time because it has to be notarized. Okay. So we'll come in here and ask Sarah to notarize your Sarah Wilder, please. Good Sarah, yeah. From Minty. Minty. the top part, but. Okay. All right, any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, number six, approve new hire for administrative assistant to the town administrator. All say aye, please. <laughs> please uh, That's getting late. I don't mind going home. Judy Alberi has joined our team. Uh, has been a wonderful addition. Has uh, already proven her earth and value <laughs> by some of the uh, introduction that she's done to keep people out of my office <laughs> when I was uh, buried and uh, getting bombarded. So uh, she comes to us with a very wide ranging resume. Um, uh, easily, it's easy to say that she's well overqualified for the position, uh, but brings the experience and knowledge base that makes it a win win for everybody involved here. She was looking for something to keep her busy, but with a little less responsibility than all the other things she has going on in her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were pleased to find that that was a good fit for her here. So. Welcome aboard. Hit the ground running. Thank you. <laughs> I move that we offer the position of permanent full-time administrative assistant to the town administrator to Jude Alberi at a rate of $22.02. .02. Two cents? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Per hour. Pay okay. <laughs> per hour. Her first day of employment is April. Or yes, yes. Right. Is April twenty fifth, two thousand twenty two. That's when I sent the poll out because she was available to start. All right, we're in May already. I can't remember. A week, a week ahead of when the meeting was, so I made the poll vote and got a consensus. Okay. I was. Just, I just wanted with the vowel. I'm um, not the vowel. The verb. So I get a motion from Judy. Is there a second? Second from Don. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Next, town administrator's report. Uh, we have begun contract negotiations with the police department. Jason and I have met with them twice now. It's going pretty well. We have a couple of weeks of reprieve before our, uh, our next meeting. Um, and it's going pretty well with negotiations and negotiations. It can go well one week and uh, then forward the next week. It's all about negotiating and uh, the, the yeah, sense of humor at the table is very rich. Uh, Lance Lamb, of the, the uh, cross steward, has been kind enough to uh, offer us candy every time we meet. So uh, it, it's actually been uh, very, very enjoyable. Is that like the olive branch? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're we looking forward to a, to a speedy conclusion to this and bring it back up. Package for consideration. Great. Sweetening the pot. Sure. Ah, that's uh, a better term. Judy's first week here. Uh, I invite her into my office so we can watch a webinar together because uh, it one had come up. Jamie Brewster actually had emailed me the day before it came to be and said, Hey, this uh, webinar is happening tomorrow on the Declaration of Inclusion that you just adopted. You might be interested. So I like, signed up for it and then Judy came in and said, hey, what's this? <laughs> it was very informative. Uh, it talked about the action part of the Declaration of Inclusion. Um, for me, it was uh, it was kind of an awakening that there's a lot of education to do. Um, there are communities like Milton, who's uh, uh, Don Turner, who's the, the um, town manager over there. Yeah. Also a uh, past representative from the town of Melbourne in the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, he had a personal experience in 2017 that he shared with everyone and it prompted him to take some steps toward this before it was a thing, I suppose you could say. Um, they uh, just this last weekend had a celebration 
of inclusivity in Melbourne. Um, so they are, say, five years ahead of us. Uh, I expect, you know, at this point, we've just adopted the statement, uh, I think education has to be done. Uh, we did an interview today with a, a very qualified young candidate for the police department, and uh, we asked him about uh, in a similar topic, and he, uh, he used the term, within a sense, used the term gender identity, and when he did so, he, he put his head down. And I said, I know that we'll be, have been successful in our training when we're more comfortable saying gender identity in the sounds and be able to continue to keep eye contact. But there are people, it's, it's just, some of these things are uncomfortable to talk about. And until we break the topic open and take a look at it, we won't become comfortable with it. So we're, we're afraid of the unknown. It's just human nature. So. Uh, I look forward to bringing some trainings to the staff uh, throughout town, and uh, we'll, we'll start with the education piece. Uh, we can't jump from there right into the weekend celebration, but uh, you know, we'll see where it takes us. Very good. The key there. Thank you, Eric. That's wonderful. Um, Scott Lange and I said, it makes it sound like I watch TV for two weeks. Sorry, <laughs> Is that what you've been doing? <laughs> Scott Lange came in and sat with me in Kevin's absence. Uh, we watched the webinar on assessing pavement conditions. Uh, which followed Scott and one other member of the highway department going down to New Hampshire to a class uh, on to, um, that was on uh, basically the pavement assessment and making a, a long-term paving plan. Um, there were some really interesting topics uh, that Scott came back and shared with all the, the, the folks at the highway department, shared with me and, and with Kevin. Um, so, it remains to be seen if we change the way we do things right now. Um, you know, they said their focus was on maintaining the good roads and then get to the bad ones when you can. And said so they've never met Buckwheat Glow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, get ready. We understood what they meant by it, but uh, it perhaps will we'll have to work into that. Uh, uh, based on the Jersey Way uh, part of our, our meeting last time, uh, Tyler. Uh, and met with Kevin and I, we did a site walk on the Jersey Way property to a look at the layout of what's there for infrastructure, what is being proposed and why, uh, and how it would be tied in. Um, there is still some work to be done. Mitzi has done some research for me, done a great job of that, uh, based on ownership of the parcel of land that exists out there as the so-called common property. Uh, I have some more, I have a meeting to attend to with that before I Announce ownership here in a public meeting. I'll just know that um, we have been able to boil it down to who owns it, and then now it's a matter of discussing what we can do on the property or how we how we can get to do what we need to do on the property. And then I come back to you. I've already been in touch with Jim Pease to keep him updated on this. I don't want that money to go away, but it's still there's a big decision to be made by the board as to how we proceed. Um, and the money is the huge dangling carrot because it doesn't cost anybody, well, in a sense, it doesn't cost our local taxpayers anything to install the system, but there is an annual maintenance fee. There is annual maintenance to be done. And uh, I am going to bring you a proposal in the very near future uh, to change your roads policy based on this. But I want to make sure that I'm giving the right information and the right advice. Um, this is a thing. This is a big thing. I can tell you that more and more of these developments that are, are happening are being required to have on-site stormwater. Mm -hmm. And they're building their roads to our specifications with the intent of the town taking the roads over. When we take the road over, we take the infrastructure with it, along with being a partner on the stormwater permit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's the, the developer makes the money, we move on, now we have a development, a road, and a shared expense. But as we can see with the Jersey Way, there's a very large development and nobody willing to come forward in the form of an HOA to share the expense with the town. So we're kind of stuck. And I don't think that's a good place for us to be. I don't think it's fair for the taxpayers around town for that to be that way. But we're going to grow, and with the growth comes compliance with state law that includes stormwater treatment. So uh, we can find out a happy meeting, I think, that we can meet where all parties can live mutually. We can continue to encourage growth, but not have all the taxpayers pay costs that a few people are incurring. More than that. Okay. Is that good? It was excellent. Did I say Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Todd, I, 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 honestly, Todd is such a wonderful 
asset for me. I go to him all the time for these things, so I make sure I have clear uh, conversation with you folks. Is he buying you treats to say that? <laughs> He's not. I buy him treats to keep telling you the right stuff. So, uh, we also completed a site visit with Tyler um, at the Dude Hill Pit. Uh, it was a last minute uh, visit because our filing was due today. Uh, the finding of facts and the uh, I can my notes here. Here I have recess order and uh, uh, numerous documents. We're all filed today on our behalf from Brooke and from Tyler. And uh, they are now with the Act 250 Commission. Um, the site walk we did was to talk about the estimation of the Hall Road, how that would look, how, you know, where, I mean, you just don't take a look at a dirt out of the wall of uh, the pit and drive around. I mean, we've got a place to process this stuff. So it was a matter of us uh, talking about locating the machinery, the equipment, the stockpiles, and how we would uh, manage those. So uh, we did that on site. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth in email between myself and Brooke and Tyler. Brooke spent the bulk of the weekend, a very lengthy and drawn out deliberation with uh, a neighbor to the property, and they have a document as of today that is signed by the neighbor. And uh, everything is headed off to the commission, and we'll see what comes out. We're hoping, again, I, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get that permit out of them, out of the hands, but uh, we had to get it filed in order to get that process started. So it's my report. Good job. Is that it? You forgot to approve warrants. Yeah, warrants. Yeah. <clears throat> and full business. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm trying to go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's You're good. You're not doing a good job of it so far. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Tina. Let's do, is there any old business? No. Okay, let's approve the warrants then. So moved. Motion by Judy, second by Brian. Any further discussion on approving these warrants? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The warrants are approved. Thank you. Next is select board concerns. Don. Well, I already alluded to this earlier, but I'll just reiterate some of this. But I did go to the DRB meeting. I continue to get myself around to as many different things as possible. And Perfect. It was a good meeting to go to for a variety of reasons. But what became very clear and the nephews have already spoken to this tonight, is parking. I agree, there's certainly parking concerns in, in the village. Uh, and my notes I made at the time were, we need, we need a parking study. In fact, maybe we need more than just a parking study, but we need a parking plan. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna do a study, maybe we need a plan as well. And they gave us some pretty good ideas of what a plan might look like, at least on Hutchins Street. And, but maybe, well, not maybe, I think we need to go, um, we need to go beyond Hutchin Street. Uh, I did make a note here, just, you know, thank Todd for the work that he did back in 2019, gathering the data that, that you gathered, because <clears throat> we have something to, to go on, but let's face it, we don't have a heck of a lot other than that. And uh, it's gonna be hard making decisions going forward. We've only got a finite number of places to park vehicles in this town. I don't think they're going to go away. Um, I think they're going to be here for the rest of my lifetime anyway. It's probably the rest of our lifetime. And so we need to need to start thinking about that. Golf carts. Golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Become like the, uh, what like do they call villages. that? The villages yeah. down in Florida. Yeah. I'll drive um, <laughs> I think, I think if we're going to put a plan together, we need some creative ideas. We've got some creative ideas tonight. That's certainly true. And we need creative ideas all over the village. I'm not sure where to go with this to, to suggest that it becomes an agenda item for the next meeting or those of you that have sat on this border longer than I might want to chime in, but at this point, I'm not going to suggest it be on the agenda the, for the, the parking. Agreement? Yeah. We can make it an agenda item if you want to do officially sanction a committee to be formed. Uh, mm -hmm. where the board member is uh, representative, you know, kind of liaison to the, the committee. Yeah. I, I'm just going to tell you folks, I don't, I don't have time to attend committee meetings. For That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just don't do it. We have lots of people that are. Well, there's some of us that could, yeah. Okay. 
I, I just, would it be an agenda item for a committee, or were we saying you would maybe do the study, study first. first and then? Or I'm thinking of an agenda yeah. item for the select board to um, officially anoint a committee. Yeah. Yeah. And give it. Give it the a mission. Give it. A, give it. Give it a job. I'll do some research on the cost of the parking study. We did not budget for it. Okay. Coming yeah. Here. Thirty days. Uh, that's what we've done. Before I have in my office. I know. Studies is parking plans. I mean, I'd rather actually spend money to create parking solutions than to continue to study it all over again. Mm -hmm. If we want to do study, things have changed or a fresher study. Mm -hmm. uh, the Orman study was the last one. I think it was two thousand eight. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, things have changed, but nothing's dramatically that different. Right. Yeah. So I'd rather. I mean, the biggest obstacle of creating more parking. There are lots of ways to do. We talk about lots of ways. Is there's a uh, hesitancy for change from and everyone in town, from the select board, from everyone. Uh, you can't do angled parking on Hutchins Street. It's a two-rod road if you're not going to angle parking on Main Street. I mean, so if you're voting no for Main Street, I mean, Hutchins Street's not. It's like That's not why possible. I didn't say angled. I said parallel. Parallel. Because we've been down angled road before. Agreed. That's how to create more parking though, is the angled right. parking though. But by the same note, Hutchins Street is much different. You know, as far as we were always concerned about rescue vehicles and everything going through the area. And if we made it one way, if we made it so it was a different type of road or even a dead end, like Laura was saying, it wouldn't be like one angle three, parking. One are easy. You're limited by the, <clears throat> right. of the barber place. I mean, right. I know I wouldn't want to park on the edge of your building a metal roof with snow in the winter. Right. So yeah, the other side of the road makes more sense. Um, but mm -hmm. it's not a ton of road front here for, for right. parallel parking. You're talking about just in front of the Hutchins Street building, the new building, and the little house in the end, and that's too close to the intersection. You're talking about a handful of spots. Mm -hmm. I, little bit also. I suggest you museum them. I'd rather spend the money on, we talked, we've approved the parking in front of the museum, putting the angle parking. Yeah, we did, we were gonna do it. One. That's one thing Dan wanted done before he left, but he spend didn't. Spend the money on that. Yeah. Spend that now. That's actually create no parking. There's seven spots there. Yeah. Continue yeah. to study this and actually not implement anything. I mean, mm -hmm. those papers just sit in Trish's office and my office and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So let me bring it as an agenda item for the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. My suggestion would be to, to officially uh, vote or, or make a motion to form a parking committee. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can work on the structure uh, of that going forward. Uh, they will you know, need to take minutes. The whole nine yards are going to be a, mm -hmm. be a public hearing, public meetings when they meet. They can take a look at the 2008 study. Uh, they can, and take all the information we currently have and uh, get creative with the process and, and go from there. They may determine at some point that it should be a, a new traffic study or a parking study should be done. I don't know. We'll look at the committee uh, with uh, folks who have uh, an interest uh, get together and we'll, uh, I would suggest too, we can put it on a, some sort of a timeline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The committees aren't meant to be out there for years and years. so. And put on the timeline and uh, get that supported and, and uh, see if we come up with we you know, come up with costs and whatnot. That's great too because uh, we start back in the budget season in October. And how much fun! <laughs> okay, let's just start with the discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Laura, I just want to object to the idea that uh, our building is going to dump a bunch of snow on your car. If we have to, we can put up some other kind of snow railing. And the area up on the hill doesn't have any overhang. Um, the building's been there for well nigh 100 plus years. And we already know the snowfall pattern. So if it's going to end up needing to have some kind of additional roof structure to redirect the snow, then we can work on that rather than say, don't park anybody there. Plus, not all year long, I know it's close, but not all the year has snow falling off of roofs. <laughs> yeah. So that can be worked out. That can be figured exactly out. just mm -hmm. discarding those ideas out of hand is a little bit mm -hmm. um, close. Mm -hmm. I don't have any select board concerns. No, no. Just I just like want to say, I wasn't going to say anything, but since you brought it up, Laura is right that the snowfall pattern, the, the, the Hutchin Street side does not load the snow. It's always over on that the side closer to the, the um, Soul Nate building. Right. It, the, that, the Hutchin Street side on a really, on a, after a snowfall, you'll see almost a bare roof there. 
most of the time. And it's not metal, so it's not going to slide off like a metal roof will um, and dump two tons of snow on somebody's vehicle. Thank you. Jess. Um, I just want to mention the um, Morristown Conservation Committee. Uh, sorry, Com commission? commission? Commission. Sorry, I should know. The Morristown Com Conservation Commission has been working on uh, community values mapping. And this is a process that will be, um, it, it just started, it was just initiated about a week ago and it'll, um, it'll be a process um, that'll terminate in the fall. And so um, everyone in the community has the opportunity to, um, to fill out a, commu a community values survey and also to, um, to get in and um, add some more um, um, comments in a Jamboard. Um, I have all the links um, from Kristen Connolly and this seems like a great opportunity, it will be a great resource for the town, I believe, going forward. And um, it'll inform the, um, the, the mission and the, uh, the actionable items for um, the Morristown Conservation Commission. Um, so I really encourage anyone listening or here to um, take a look at the survey and, the, um, and to input um, anything that they think of. Um, and so I'm wondering if, um, if I can pass the links along and have Sarah Haskins um, put them on the town website and also would I be able to pass them on to you and um, Judy and have you put them in the meeting minutes under my select board concerns, is that possible? The survey? Yeah, the link the to the survey. I no. the okay. The okay. mention of them. The mention, okay. The and can I say that they'll be available on the town website. I would say so. Okay. I, I, followed, yeah. I told you yeah. I would speak to Sarah. Yeah. The conversation did not happen. I know, it's um, not top priority. And I just, yeah. No, no, no. It's, yeah. I mean, and, and all these things are, are priority. Yeah. Better future growth for yeah. community. So I just, it, it just goes back. I mean, because I got, I'm saying not top priority because I asked you about it today. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I agree. I made myself yeah. enough to speak okay. to Sarah in the morning about it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. it. Okay. That's it. Yep. Brian. Yes, um, I want to apologize because I meant to drive around. How are we coming on the sidewalk uh, crosswalks? They'll be painted before the 4th of July. Or the of July. <laughs> okay. they're, they're in the process of sweeping the streets right now. Um, until we get the streets, the streets swept, we can't apply any paint. We have paint um, that was been ordered. Is that going to be kind of like for so uh, Matt Frederick found a lot of product to go on with the paint the crosswalks. It's a, um, basically it's glass that's uh, pulverized. But uh, after you apply the paint to the road, you uh, use a sifter type device and you sift the glass particles into the uh, paint and it dries in place and creates a reflection of both sunlight and headlight. So uh, it makes some miles I saw them doing this. this. Yeah, that's one of my great pickups. Yeah, I wasn't we, sure. I thought the paint was an issue. It had been. Last year it definitely was an issue, but it seems to be available right now, so uh, we bought plenty. Yes. Now, are, do we have anybody come in and do some of them, or you guys? We do. We've got yeah, scheduled okay. right now for the week before Memorial Day. Okay. Well, I know we did that for the kids, especially the ones at school. Thanks. That's all I had. That's all you had? Yeah. I, I'd just like to say again, I really enjoyed uh, the nephew family coming in tonight and, and giving us your creativity and ideas. I think it's awesome. I think, you know, some of these conversations can take a long time and, you know, meetings go long. We have a full agenda. But I think those conversations are great. And along with the folks that were here for, for the, um, the tacos and taps and Tom Moog, it, it's excellent to have this Don't kind of. The uh, What's that? Don't forget the donuts. Oh, don't forget the donuts, yeah. <laughs> but it's great to have this participation in our town. And I haven't seen it like that for a long time. And it's just really nice for, for us to see. And um, thank you. Thank you again for coming in. We, we certainly are listening and we'll work with, with uh, what we can. You know, I love the idea of having a committee and get everybody together, people that are, care a lot about it. Obviously, you guys care about the downtown just like we do. And um, we can work together. So that's all I got.
Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Judy, second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. We are now adjourned. Thanks. Thank you, Judy.